this is the the podcast from uh, from Manny's Discord. So we've got a few people here. So we've got Deegs, uh, myself, Azazel. Uh, we've got Manny and Wanamass. So uh, quite a few big names in the community. Um, I'm still, I guess, fairly new in uh, in the streaming scene, but uh, been in Gods and Legends for a little bit. So I guess first things are, uh, we'll just go over what, what the main topics are for today. So we've got the fusion. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the new champs that are coming out. And then I guess also the, um, the rare books. Uh, did you guys have anything else you wanted to add to that? We can uh, talk about matchmake, uh, the the arena matching, the right? Bots. The bots. Sure, sure. We can bots, cover that. All that stuff. Man. Yeah. Well, do you want to do you want to start with that one then, Manny? That might be a good place to start um, while we're waiting for Kalari. So you, I heard you and um, oh, I saw I saw the video that you and Wistix put together. That was, was right. pretty pretty good. Uh, I'm not Thank sure you. if people from chat saw that, but do you want to maybe just run over the the main points? For you to go over it, I didn't get to catch the whole thing. No, it's, I mean, uh, long story short is whatever Valkyrie's posts uh, was all about, um, it's not exactly um, what's going on, you know, as far as matchmaking. Matchmaking right now is, um, you know, they added the bots and things like that. And um, I don't know, there's a lot of misleading information in her post and... Um, Sorry, you put me on the spot here as I'm just waking up here. No, no, you're uh, right, man. Uh, but um, pretty much, yeah, there's 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 a lot of changes going on with matchmaking. And I guess what I'm concerned about is that the last bit of iteration, what they're saying, that they're going to match people more with player power, yep. you know, and their level. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about because that's something that we didn't really uh, talk about before. And, like, how that's going to affect everybody because... You know, a lot of people like put in, you know, put extra gear on their, um, you know, on their on their vault champs and things like that. And uh, does that affect like them finding somebody that's harder now? And like, I don't know, uh, has that changed? Because I, 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 if I understood correctly, that change is implemented already. Well, it's not going to sure. affect top plat because you're going to be paired up with people that are similar level there. But maybe right. the lower rankings. Other people. Uh, right. But then, that's what I'm concerned that about. I guess you wonder about whether that means that you can uh, game the system a little bit. Like if you specifically have low power, then does that mean that you can fight against other people that have low power so you get easier fights? Yeah, just uh, I don't know because if I understood correctly, that changes live. And I don't really quite understand yet wh how that's impacting people and like matchmaking and things like that. And I don't know, I guess... Uh, for for me, like I have twelve million player power, so I mean, to me, like when I when I refresh in platinum, it doesn't really change. I still find the same kind of opponents, but I was just like, I was wondering what kind, how this change is gonna affect the other player base, you know, like um, you know, people that are like in lower in lower levels, are they gonna really find people that are more suited to their level? Is this change positive? Because this change is already live. I don't know. I guess I wanted to like ask around about that a little bit I Quick, guess, quickly you know? on that um that change is live only for bronze and silver tiers okay it doesn't apply to golden yeah. but not maybe not oh, yet but at okay. least it's only there says gold and silver right now that yes, makes more go. sense and and you've got less advantage sort of gaming those um because those you're just not going to have much power anyway okay that's a good excuse for me to stop gearing uh vault champions <laughs> no chance one of us no chance man. um also okay. we've just had uh kalari join in uh, you there, Chloe? Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, cheers, mate. Welcome on board. Wagwan. <laughs> Before we get too deep into things, uh, Paints, I just wanted to double check in. Uh, are you recording or do you have VODs on, etc., just so we can be sure? Yeah, I have VODs on. I checked yesterday that they were all working. Uh, I had made some VODs, so we should be all good. This way, Grimjaw will not kill us all. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't <laughs> want to face Grim's wrath, honestly. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, I, I was concerned about that as well, so I've double checked, but should be good. Um, Andy, can you check the uh, podcast chat really quick? What did I miss? No, so we're just talking about uh, Manny's video with Wistix, just around the the bots, and um, oh, yeah, just around the the economy for that. So I guess the the main point. I definitely of that, watched it. You watched it? Definitely watched it, hundred percent. I support Manable in all of his activities. 
<laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay, so I won't ask you any questions mm. about it. Um, I keep meaning to get around to it. Little sauce. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the main points for it were that um, what actually happens is in Arena, when you have a battle with someone, you... Um, you know, you win the same amount of points as they lose. And so every time you're not actually gaining um, gaining points. So if you look at, um, at the battle log, so when I gain, um, I gain nine points and they lose nine points. So then what that means is, um, is no one no one's really making any, any um, additional points into the system unless they're at the bottom of um, bronze. And so that's the only way we're actually getting points into the system. But then uh, what happens is every reset, we lose a whole chunk of points and then they disappear. And so... Um, the bottleneck, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So gradually there's less and less points in the system, which then makes it more and more difficult for people to acquire the points, or like enough points to make it into the higher um, tiers. So yeah. the, video, the video goes into a lot more specifics on it, but that's like the, the nuts and bolts. So in the video, did um, did they mention his Reddit? Because he also posted on Reddit, kind of the similar idea, right? Yeah. So because I I actually did read the Reddit post. Is that basically what was in the video? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. A simpler version. I remember someone made a post about it about a month or two ago now, and like it's more complex than it sounds. It's not as yeah. like simple as like oh you just run out of points. Like it's to do with how everyone's points effectively get generated through the week and yeah. like for you to be at 4k two different people have to be at 1k and so on yeah yeah it's like right. it forces like a pyramid and so what happens is when they introduce the bots um whether they meant it or not it actually helps the economy because when the bots lose points it doesn't actually um doesn't actually change doesn't anything affect a player though right with the new announcement from Valkyrie, um, they actually said that they weren't bots. They're actually people that are in lower ranks that... Bullshit! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. It's not on my nose. So, but, but that's actually worse then because that means that, you, that, that we're not actually fixing the issue. If it was bots, then it's, it's better because then it's uh, points yeah. to get added into the system. So Yeah, they keep injecting the points. Because that's just too fucking many of them. Yeah, yeah. I think um, we're just right. calling them bots. I think, <clears throat> like it. I don't know if it's bot. I I highly doubt that these are like real active players that are getting thrown at like silver yeah. to gold people, and then they're get they're like in bronze or some shit and getting pushed down. I highly doubt that's the case. Well, I think we're just calling it, right? them bots. Guys, uh, sorry. I want to mess. I want to interrupt you for yeah, a second. Up? I was being called a bot. Oh yeah, you know, I was away yeah. for a full week. <laughs> I was being called a bot on yeah. one of the Discord servers, which was super funny. Is this with, why uh, why were they saying you were a bot? Because because you had death hounds in the defense. He did. No, I, no, I had a standard to defense with a Fushan and Arbiter, and uh, apparently <laughs> nobody uses Madame on defense, according to that person. Put in, uh, are you no respect me? on your name. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was wow. pretty funny. <laughs> that's pretty that's honestly hilarious. Yeah, no, sorry, I did um yeah. I think that I 100 percent believe that this was intentional by Plarium, which is fine. Um like and they're never going to admit to that, right? But uh I, I guess that they their their clarification was they're probably not bot accounts, they're possibly fake or they're probably accounts that did exist at one time but are no longer active which would be my guess so the reason i refuse to believe they are or were ever real is that if you look at any screenshot that has these accounts on their refresh 90 percent of the time these champions aren't ascended and like every active player just ascends their fucking champions like not back even, in the if, day, even if they're trash yeah. champ yeah they're at least not, like six not back in the day Clark. like way back in the fucking day they did not but even then, that would insinuate they're inactive accounts, which they said they aren't. They said they're currently active players and pushed up. But, like, there's just way too many of them that aren't ascended for it to be anything but, like, an intentional implement. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and I guess the, the video was just covering different ideas or solutions or things like that. I was talking to Wistics, and I mean, I thought of something in there that he mentioned that I was like, wow, this is really awesome. Like, you know, when you're sitting there attacking an arena and you're pushing on reset, but rather, it's, and so you can make up new points in different ways. Like, one of the ways that he was mentioning is, like, if you have a win streak, you get a couple of bonus points. I thought that that was really cool. So that Do way, you? like, no, I'm saying if That's they implemented idea. that. If they implemented that. See, I think you should do the opposite. I think if you're on a lose streak and you finally win one, you should get a bonus. Because if you win oh. streak and keep getting more, like think how many like think how much our points would inflate if we're on win streaks in high plat. Because let's See, be honest. Yeah. Like if everyone if everyone goes to their great hall right now, how many wins you got this week? How many losses? Yeah, it's mostly just all wins, right? You'll have like, a you should, handful like, of losses. I'm I'm willing to bet though. Right? Unless you're testing a team, any player is gonna be like ninety, ninety five percent plus win rate. Like you should be maintaining that kind of win rate. It would have so, to. It would have to. I feel like win streaks could be an issue. Okay, bad idea, I guess. But <laughs> like, no, no, no. The, like, the, the, the concept is fine. The execution a bit. Yeah, I, I think it's like uh, I used to play Hearthstone quite a lot, um, and they implemented like uh, like once you hit a certain rank, you couldn't drop below that. They also meant they also implemented like win streaking, but only up to a certain rank. So like I think yeah. it's perfectly fine for like. Because because they have, like, ranked reset every, I don't know, month or whatever. And then so people who are really high ranking, like, um, you would just win streak your way up to, like, a, a proper rank where you can't drop below. And then your win streaking stops. So I think it's yeah. part, like if they implemented it and then your streak stops once you hit platinum. So you can't just streak in platinum. Um, yeah. Then yeah, I think it would be fine. Yeah, fair enough. Or like even if it was just like a time limit, like you can only streak. It counts your streaks in the last, say, five minutes, rather than. Because otherwise, I mean, I'm pretty sure if if we tried, any one of us could stack up like a 500 wins, zero losses in a week and plan them. You know what I mean? Like, if you were really actively trying to not take a single loss, you could, you could work out ways to like literally take absolutely zero losses. If there was a bonus to doing that. But yeah, like if you're if you're trying to grind from silver three to silver one and you got a 20 win streak then yeah you should get some kind of reward for that just adds more fun to the game i feel like you know it rewards yeah, yeah. you and it makes you more selective on what opponents you try to attack i'm just after plarium's track record i'm uh i'm very wary of any potential exploits in arena but like, yeah, yeah. at a competitive level yeah But yeah, like I've been, I'm the issue as a whole. I'm torn because, on the one hand, it's good that people can get arbiter again. Like it's good that you don't need crazy plat level knowledge to progress. However, at the minute it's far too easy. Like it's a joke. I'm seeing posts of people being like, "Oh, I was silver two last week and I just made it to platinum for the first time," and that should just like straight up not be possible. I've seen so many names that I've. Never fucking like, seen I, it before in my life this week. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to like gatekeep. I'm just saying, like, if your team was in silver two last week, it is not a team that deserves to be in gold four. Yeah, all that. All that. I feel like it's gonna do. It's gonna be like, oh my god, I was in gold four, and now I'm back. Like now I'm gonna have it again. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like it's like they just keep toying with people's emotions. I with all these, like, think rank. it's brilliant. <laughs> do you? Okay. Oh yeah. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not actually trolling here. So. Hear me out. Okay. So you had a silver four player who all of a sudden is like a platinum, right? Okay. Today, closer to reset, they will be put back into their place by, you know, regulars in platinum, high gold four, yeah. even gold three people. So now in order to compensate for that, they have to have a lot of arena refreshes. So what they do, they go buy them. Done. Yeah, but we're, we don't we're care not. about that. People in <laughs> don't care about, care about that. The only person who pretty much loses is the person who feels that they should be higher than they actually supposed to be. That's it. I mean, I guess, but like it's a brilliant move by Plarium, but not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> no, yeah. no, of course it's not a good thing. I'm just saying it's that a money. brilliant move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because while we're still on the topic, I actually talked about, or we talked about this on um, 
Saffron's podcast yesterday because I was on again for another week and literally everybody there but me was I don't want to I don't want to exaggerate and make things sound like but they were all saying hey like good change we like it we like the bots like I climbed from from X to gold four I got my arbiter um like I love all the free great uh great hall points and I was just sitting there going like guys this is this is not a good fix right like I I told them like I it's, it's, I, it's like a band-aid fix you know it's a Band-Aid fix. I agree that the Arbiter missions are not currently balanced. Um, they're not tuned for, well now. Yeah, they're not, they're not tuned well for where the game has progressed to, right? I agreed with that, but then I said that this is not the right fix um, in that it's creating, uh, at least I think it's creating a bubble, right? Because all these players that are getting, or that are pushing themselves up by free, refreshing and hitting bots and hitting... You know, an entire like jumping an entire arena, like jumping from bronze to like bronze four to silver four, or silver four to gold four, or, or in some cases, literally like bronze up to like gold, gold one, two, three, four, purely from bots. It's creating this bubble where once they take away these bots, these players are fucked, right? They're going to yeah. all of a sudden, and like there will be other players relatively within their power level who also pushed up to their this arena rank. So they might find the occasional fight or two of someone around their power level. Yeah, but like once these bots are gone, once they're gone, all of a sudden it's like nine out of ten of their fights are going to be literally impossible for them. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. I think it's. I think there's going to be a massive. Um, I can't wait for the Reddit run. fallout, dropout, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Once these bots are gone, and I. Yeah, all the people who are praising Plarium, saying this is like an amazing change, they fixed Arena, they're in a, for a rude awakening. Yeah. My issue yeah. with it is, is like, I don't know. The people that are kind of like being like, oh, yeah, you know, it's great that these bots are in the game. Like, I understand that you want to progress your Great Hall, and I understand you want to get to Arbiter, but like, I just, I, it doesn't make sense to me that people just like want to coast through it. Like, I. A competitive aspect of any game has always been the reason I play a game. Like, when I played World of Warcraft, I only really cared about Arena, you know. When I played League of Legends, I cared about rank. Like, I don't know. For me, like, if there's PvP in a game, it should be a challenge. I wouldn't want to post up to the top rank. AFK, you know what I mean? Yeah, but the yeah. issue is that PvP is so tied closely to your missions and account progression that it's a little difficult, right? Like, I, yeah, so I yeah, yeah. Like, 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 change, change, the, change the missions too. I understand. Yeah. Like, change the missions yep. for a start, but then make arena at least semi competitive. Because we, we, we were like, we just reached the point where like getting to gold four was like a decent achievement again. Like, we just reached that point, and now uh, we're back to fucking square one. Here's uh here's another caveat. So like the game has gotten a lot easier, like a lot better in the last year, right? Like like as far as packs, as far as like you know players, how many people are playing, and all different kinds of things. The one area that it's gotten worse is like in great hall farming. You know, uh, a year ago we can all coast and play the game for a month and be in gold four and start farming our great hall. Now, yeah. now they took that away, and that's kind of a, a, a that's that's. It's kind of messed up, I guess I would say, because like people need to farm their great hall so they can do their faction wars and they can do all these different aspects of the games much easier. And it shouldn't be, you know, ten times harder than it was before, you know, without them introducing the bots. So there's there's like a lot of things that this is affecting besides just the arbiter mission, I think. You know, but think, arbiter, yeah, go ahead. So like great generally speaking, great hall progression is slow, but let's be honest. Yeah. Um I'm a fucking giga whale and I'm, my great hall is 204 205. So I'm like still a reasonably significant margin away. Oh, wow, you're slacking, bro. Are you? Exactly, that's what I mean, but like you've seen how much I play arena. Like I've got 300 fights a week already and we're not even reached reset yet. Like I, I do arena a lot and it takes that long to max it. So like it's good that there's a long-term goal, but it's completely unrealistic for like a regular player. You know what I mean? It's basically impossible. Yeah, so, so yeah, you can I, see I mine like on, on a change for that. that is necessary. So yeah, I'm only at uh, 193. Um, so yeah, still got a fair bit of work to go before I get close to maxing. Yeah, it takes a long time. And like you've got what, 340 fights this week already, Pinter? Uh, like, how have you got yeah, so many roughly. losses, mate? What do you, what I've, been, you been I've been there? testing. 
Just being testy against <laughs> AGs, playing around. <laughs> scuff, scuff player, mate. Well, that, that was like you no sneaked good. that bias, didn't you? Well, yeah, that's why I closed out quickly. So, uh, Gods and Legends 1 now has an open spot for recruitment. <laughs> <coughs> My time has come. Diggs, Diggs has stepped it up. He's trying. He's trying. I'm finally a big boy as of today. I can one key Ultra Nightmare <laughs> with fucking Aina. <laughs> Here, look. And he, and he oh, got the 10 so million good. as well. But, like, you're only at level 99, mate. We only accept people at level 100, so. Yeah, today. I'm like 91%. I don't want to do it just yet. <laughs> uh, are you well, getting yeah, anyway, off topic. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway so like, I feel like great whole progression is a serious issue for like a lot of newer players because and the, an issue with it is, is that as the as our accounts get older like let's be honest the people make the people making content and creating guides tend to be more experienced players so like slowly over a time the assumptions of your great hall when you're making videos gets higher and higher and higher so, like, I find it trivially easy to get an account, like, a champion to, like, 200 accuracy. Because chances are they've got, say, 20 accuracy base, and they've got a maxed accuracy great hall. So, like, I only really have to get 100 compared to someone that has to get the full whack. Yeah, yeah you either so, just pop on a banner or a couple pieces yeah. with, with, like, one accuracy roll, and we're already at 200. couple substats, yeah, exactly. Like, I very rarely even need to use a banner at this point. Yeah, 200 but, yes. accuracy is, uh, is the joke. Someone, someone who's got making their first nightmare, first ultra nightmare team, quite realistically, will have to wear accuracy sets. Like it's, yeah, or or have that accuracy chest and banner or something like that. Yeah. To and be then, honest, I'm I'm super against people going into ultra nightmare boss without at least one faction. Oh, sorry, uh, one affinity accuracy fully maxed. Yeah. Because that's what so, it was was for me. For the, me, it was force. Yeah, the flip it was side fully of that. maxed, and then I went into ultra nightmare. Like if you the go with side, like sorry. level four, great hall, and you expect to do well in ultra nightmare, I guess we all play in different game then. Yeah. So the flip side of what I'm saying with like the older players, the great hall being more advanced, is that strategy for like clan boss dungeon farming pretty much everything has progressed exponentially from when we first started doing this stuff so like when i first started doing nightmare clan boss pretty much unkillable teams like were only just being created really like this is like before clan like clan hopping so like it was like oh do you have a counter attack no then you run apothecary and razin and like whichever poison that you have. Like, getting an occult brawler was a big deal. You know, people would still regularly run, like, Kale and, you know... Yeah, um, Steel Skull Aothar. was the king yeah, Ste of Steel the Skull, Aothar, Aothar. <laughs> those kind of champions. Whereas yeah. now it's like, everyone's running unkillable, everyone's running man-eaters, everyone's got two key, and it's, like, trivially easy to get a new account to, like, two key Nightmare, or, like, two key Ultra Nightmare than it was when we first started. Yeah. Yeah, we've made a lot of progress. Um... Oh, not necessarily like as a me, community, but... not not just us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um... yeah look the man. Remember Juliana? Like, no one talked about no one talked about champ anymore. She used to be amazing. Oh, she was the queen of all clan bosses, other than Nightmare, I would say. Exactly. Yeah, yeah she was. She was like the best. I still use her in faction wars. She's still good. <laughs> 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 right, guys. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah, I remember like way back in the days. I saw like a. Uh, I saw a post on Reddit of someone one keying Nightmare, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is literally impossible! How could Your anyone ever blown. do this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I remember when I got my first, I got my first ever four key Ultra Nightmare, and like my old clan, they were like, "Oh my god, how did you do it?" They were like amazed. Ultra Nightmare, and that, oh, that, man. That, and that was with a Valkyrie. Oh, <laughs> when Ultra but, Nightmare dropped, it was it was honestly <laughs> hilarious watching people go. Because people were, like, complaining, right? Saying, like, oh, man, yeah. it's so fast. It does so much damage. And it was just, like, we just didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like, although newer players might not have the same great hole that we do, that we do they've got the benefit of, what is it? Is it two years now of, like, you know, strategy progression that they could just, like, pick up and use immediately? True. Yeah, yeah, probably two years. So yeah, I feel like there's, there's two sides to each story. Like, yeah, we have better stats, but they've got, not to sound 
patronizing, like a lot of the legwork done for them. Honestly, anyone who didn't go through the pain of farming Minotaur <laughs> should, should not complain. Yeah, Minotaur <laughs> used to be uh, half as many red scrolls. Skull, yeah. skull, and you couldn't skull. buy them. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Is Minotaur a champion you guys get from shards or something? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, pigs. <laughs> Fuck you. All right, guys. Let's um, let's let's move it along a little bit. Um, so I guess a hot topic for everyone is um, word on the street is there's a new fusion in town. So what's oh, yeah, um, what, what's everyone's thoughts? So maybe um, as what do you think? Um, you know what I tend not to comment on fusions. Uh, until I actually see the hero in action, because um, like with pe- uh, with previous fusions, um, you guys remember the hate on School Lord and yeah, uh, yeah. what's his face, the Golden. Uh, anyways, as soon as I saw School Lord and I got him, I immediately used him in the faction wars, like the mm-hmm. day later. And yeah. I beat my lizards right away. I'm the same, actually. I did the exact same. So I was like, that's already one use where the champion just dominates content. That's already good, you know? So with this guy, I don't know wh- where he's good at. So I'm okay. on the fence. So, so maybe we should uh, take a step back. So often people, um, they talk about how you can prepare for a, uh, a fusion. So, um, Manny, do you have the, the date of when this fusion comes out? I believe it comes out tomorrow. Don't quote me on it. It's not official, but that's what, uh, that's what I think everybody's expecting. Yeah. I've got um, it from day as well. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I, I guess the, the, the real hot topic before we get into like actually speaking about the fusion is they introduced 22 new champions, right? So, like, um, you know, obviously by the time this goes up live, um, you know, later, uh, we'll know better. But, I mean, everybody kind of has this hunch inside that you're going to need all those epics to make this champion. Um, Which, that's kind of like the big thing that everybody's kind of stressing over because there are, you know, the mouse is like a good epic and things like that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really wanting to know what's up with that as well because... Think about it. We hoard all these epics for fusions, you know, and if this is the way they're going to go with the fragments and then fusions with new epics, like they need to really communicate with us because our vault is like a lot of people's vaults are like going through hell, you know? Yeah. So quickly on that topic, um, the last time we had a big like 20 plus champion release was Rotos. At which point we got Rotos and Siffy. We got Fan Cleric, Sky Touched, um, Sepulchre, and one more, I forget the name of. We had four new epics, basically, and a bunch of new rares. And Rotos' fusion was four new epics. And I think at least 75% plus new rares. So yeah. it's quite likely we'll see that again. It's like, I, w- I, would, I would put money on it. I'm willing to bet that we'll see all yeah. new champions in the fusion. Yeah, I'm with Kalari on this. However, like, don't get me wrong, that sucks. Yeah, you've saved your rares, you've saved your epics. That's bad. You know, you want to use the stuff you've saved up. However, since Rotos, we've had Killian, Skull Lord, Kantra, um, Gurp Tuck. Who else is there? We had another fusion since then? It's just been four. Uh, so we've, had, we've, had, we've had a. Yeah, it's a second Kantra. We've had at least four fusions that did use existing champions. So, yeah, while the occasional one is going to be like effectively pay to win there are exi- there are ones that use existing champs so it's not like we not you can empty your vault completely yeah and they used to be pretty simple right to complete the the one with the existing champions yeah yeah i mean school Lord was basically farming the same campaign <laughs> oh man actually, yeah, Lord yeah, actually yeah. sucked that was actually such an annoying fusion I, I guess that one doesn't count because let's be honest who the fuck keeps 16 of who keeps 16 of one rare? <laughs> so I guess that one doesn't count, but we've still had three. Yeah, and it's just the flex. Just to flex. But it's possible that you had a few of the of the Drakes. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah, possible you had one of the Drakes already. It was pretty simple. Yeah. I think I had one. Yeah, I had one and had to farm the other. What is it, twelve? So yeah, I I'm I'm willing to bet it's gonna be like a Roto style, like very 
resource intensive fusion. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's really worth that's... it is the question. Yeah, I think he's I OK. The... So I, I, I read. Go ahead. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So before we start commenting on him, maybe it's worth just running through his abilities. So yep. I think for for this champ, we'll we'll discuss his abilities and maybe the other Lego. And then um, I'm not sure that we really want to, you know, talk out every single one that that we go through. But that's a couple the... epics worth highlighting. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for the ones that that sort of stand out, we'll we'll talk about their abilities. Um, but I don't want to read out every single one because we'll be here all night. So yeah. this guy's name is uh, Virgo Macar. Um, Hold on, M Manny. Oh, we should have got Manny to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get to the next one. It's fine. <laughs> so he's a legendary spirit uh, support type uh, lizard man. So his A1 attacks one enemy, has 35% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn, and the chance increases by 15% for each buff on the target. Uh, his A2 uh, removes all provoke debuffs and one random debuff from all allies. Uh, he places a 60% increased defense buff uh, for two turns on all allies who have debuffs removed. And he also... Uh, places shield buff on all allies equal to 20% of this champion's max HP. Uh, for his A3, he attacks all enemies, removes one random buff from each enemy, has 75% chance of removing two random buffs from each enemy, uh, places 100% block heal uh, debuff for three turns on enemies who have one or more buffs removed, and 60% decreased defense um, debuff for two turns on enemies who have two buffs removed. So it's a bit of a wall of text there, but... Um, yeah. It's a shitty Ceres. He's got a passive man. It's a shitty Ceres. Oh, sorry. It's passive, but, yeah, okay. Oh, he's actually got even more. I thought I was done. But, um, yeah, so he's got a passive, which is immune to provoke debuffs. Okay, so that makes a bit more sense. Um, so he fills champion's turn meters by 20% each time an enemy uh, attempts to provoke it. Uh, place a provoke debuff on this champion, and he also has an aura um, of resist for 55. And that's all battles. So I guess, Diggs, what what do you think about him? Where where would you think maybe you might want to use him more? Um, yeah, so I'm I'm going to go for the fusion. I'll get him. Uh, I'll gear him up, and I'll probably put him in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like I, I'm looking at I'm him really. I can't see much use for that kit uh, for me as an end game player um, that can't be fulfilled with other champions, you know, to a better degree. So, do you? Yeah. <laughs> do you guys think that it might be a sign of one of the levels or one of the bosses in um, in the Doom Tower? Considering it's a fusion that a lot of people will end up getting. Yeah, I don't think so they think that far ahead. To be fair, though, that is I think it's worth mentioning. So. Currently, my issue with his kit is I don't think there's anywhere where Provoke is particularly worrying, to be honest. Like, Angar is a good champion. Morley's a good champion. But, like, that's kind of it, really. There um, is a there's no um, real... Faction 20 it's war boss. Or, or add, add that places it. Yeah, so but the left that's not the Yeah. But that, is, that isn't the yeah, 20 war boss. Who cares? <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so like, I don't think there's anywhere in the current game where provoke is like such a huge issue that you would bring a specific champion to deal with it rather than just like block buffs. Um, but there might be in future. So like, it's one of those ones where if you can get him, you might as well. Yeah, I think um, that that's a pretty good rule uh, in general. If you can get a legendary, you should always try like, to. I think his A1's pretty good. Um, you know, his A2 removes at least one random debuff from all allies and gives you death up. So, like, it's, it's a cleanse and death up. So that's, like, equivalent to Mausoleum Mage is, again, fairly good. Um, gives them a small shield. Not bad. Could be a decent Doom Tower support. Because I, I think having cleansers in Doom Tower will be fairly important. I've got a feeling when I get debuffs a lot. Um, and then the A3, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. Like, again, there could be times when it's going to be effectively an AoE death down. There'd be times when it's effectively useless. But I think it's... I think he's okay. I just don't think he's... White, he's, he's not going to blow your mind, but supports rarely do. 
Um, I think uh, one thing that so when I look at champions and their kits, I always try to figure out what champion they synergize really well with. And I feel like this champion right here can synergize really well with Mortu Macab with their A3. Yeah. Um, the A3 places block heal and uh, Mortu Macab's A2, if they have block heal, then the block buffs cannot be resisted. So you don't need to put any accuracy on, on Mortu Macab and you can build him like full damage. You know, I think that there's a little bit of synergy there between those two champions. Just trying to think of ways that you can kind of, uh, you know, some some potential benefits of, of pairing him with specific champions. Right, but the, it has to Many. remove one buff to put the block heal. So you have to yeah. intentionally oh, attack teams that yeah. you yeah. know have at least one buff. Right. You, you could attack a shield team or something if that's exactly. the strategy exactly, you wanted yeah. to take. But that's only a single buff. I mean, I guess the, yeah, there was a more two. My my issue is to trying to get the death down on him. You would have to hit a team that has like, you'd have to go second versus something like Siffy, or you would have to hit a team that has like immunity and a shield set, which is let's be honest, quite unlikely. Or like you'd have to get lucky and attack a Crisk in shield set, right? Because that's two separate it's, it's buffs. Still, it's still just one buff. Is that? I thought it shows up as two different buffs, or is it just one so gigantic I, shield? I believe I believe the shields are calculated differently, but like in terms of buffs on their health bar, it's one buff. Mm. And I've got a feeling it's going to judge it by like number of buffs on your health bar. I guess I haven't actually like looked. I guess you uh, just hit little wheel, and we can tell. I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, like it, I'll, I'll I will show you my defense if I was live, but it's it doesn't it only counts as one buff. So I guess overall, like, is just on the kit itself, does this champion look uh, like amazing? Like compared to this last fragment fusion, I think this last fragment fusion that the champions sort of <laughs> He's a better than Draco. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like this last champion that we just all like gathered all our resources for is is definitely underwhelming. Yeah. And now this champion here is kind of like a niche kit, you know, mostly kind of like arena based, I guess. Um, I don't know. You see, I'm not sure. Like, I think he could be okay. In, in a go second tier arena, he's potentially fairly good. Um, I don't think he's, like, to a platinum level. Like, the issue with us, I think, a lot of the time is that we tend to come at this from, like, is he going to be viable in platinum? Which I'm not sure he will be, to be honest. I don't think he is. No, the answer is no. But, to like, be honest, can, guys, you, can you use him I, effectively at lower reload? Probably. I just want to say one thing. If Lizards had stage 21 with valkyries then he's a good champion for oh, yeah, the great, yeah. but they have i think i think one. they have the uh i think they have a stage where it has like is it two valkyries and a turvold i think they have that stage well yeah it's and that 19, was kind that, that stage I is mean, kind of hard you making a fusion to <laughs> To beat yeah, stage okay. 19 of uh <laughs> yeah, one of the one of the devs I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's a selling point, right but I'm saying it's like it's at least somewhere. Sorry, one to miss? What are you saying? I said one of the devs just can't beat stage nineteen, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> and they won't let him give himself a crisp. <laughs> That's this is my favorite law. This is fact now. <laughs> <laughs> this is why the champ fell. Oh. Yeah, I mean yeah. like you guys have noticed a trend, right? With the uh uh, the login reward champions are usually like pretty good for faction wars, right? Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like catered yeah. for faction wars, even to their aura. Yeah, like Sill was amazing, Tainix amazing, Grush amazing. V6 is honestly kind of shit, to be honest. But like, Let's maybe, once we, get, maybe when we get it, maybe when we get it, we'll see it. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Talk about I'm, Zazzle I'm, can't I'm wait to get his second one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wants his dupe. I'm hesitant to slate this guy. Because I I've, I've got a feeling that if you've not got a crazy roster, I feel like he's going. He's bringing you an A one stun that's semi reliable. He's bringing you a cleanse and a death up and a shield. He's bringing you an A O E hit with buff strip and potentially death down. And he's getting turn meter bonus when you get provoked. And he's bringing you a resist aura. I've got a feeling this guy's gonna be quite good for like a lot of accounts in Doom Tower. He's got a very robust kit, I think, for like progression content. It's just that the vast majority of the game is past current progression content. Yeah, that's fair. That's a good way to look oh, at it. Good point. That's yeah, a, that, that's a very good point, Kalari. Yeah. Yeah, for the general populace, 
I I agree with Glory. Yeah, like he unless you're sw- unless you're swimming in legendaries, I feel like this guy's going to be like a really solid Doom Tower support. All right then. Um, so I guess we just jump on to the next uh, next champion. So, oh, did anyone have any last remarks about the fusion? He looks fucking cool. Do you guys remember when we got into the dev thing and saw his character model? It looks sick. That doesn't actually matter at all with like it, how good he is. It's a big champion. lizard, right? He look, yeah, he looks the great. Poster. Yeah, yeah, and he's got like a big same. fan, like mm-hmm. not I, I want to say headdress, but it's not. It's like a, it's horns. You know how a Triceratops has like a big fan of horns. It's awesome. Yeah, I just thought I'd nerd out for a little bit there. I like dinosaurs. What? Yeah, no, that's cool. <laughs> at least they've taken into account that uh, dinosaurs have uh, had feathers or. You know, the new theory that suggests that. Oh, yeah. So. All right. uh, they, they totally stole a lot of their upcoming shit from Warhammer Fantasy, by the way. If you look at, you remember the uh, the video they brought out, like, a few weeks ago now? They showed a bunch of new champs. Yeah. Like, at least half of those are straight ripped off. Oh, Warhammer right, Fantasy. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's, like, a straight-up Tomb King. Like, Cetra is coming to raid. I hope you're ready for that. Um, theory, yeah. Um, okay, so the new, the, the other new legendary is uh, uh, Osaga Warcaller. Um, so she's a legendary void HP, and she's in Barbarian's faction. So someone else want to read out her abilities? Is there a lore behind the champion? Is she related to War Mother by any chance? No, it's, it's War Mother so. with makeup on. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm trying to find a link quickly. Oh, you can't see <laughs> okay. it on my stream. On stream, so her Sorry. A1 uh, gigantic cudgel attacks one enemy, has a 45% chance of placing a block school a block cooldown skills debuff for one turn. Okay, it's a half-decent A1. Isn't this what um, they gave Norog, the Norog now for his new A1? There seems to be a lot of copying A1s, right? Because the, I feel the, like it's decent. It's half-decent, but now the lizard okay, guy, he has stun on the A1, and doesn't Drock Goal also stun on the A1? Yeah, but I think it's a lower chance. Yeah, so kind of weird, but okay, so the A2 barrel through, <clears throat> attacks all enemies, places a 30% decrease crit damage debuff and a 50% decrease attack debuff for two turns on targets whose attack is higher than their defense. Places a 30% decrease speed debuff and a 60% decrease defense debuff for two turns on targets whose attack is equal to or lower than their defense. A3 bottoms up, places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for two turns, places a 25% strengthen buff on this champion for two turns, and then the passive golden guard decrease the damage all allies receive from critical hits by 30%. This champion will receive that damage instead. And then they have a HP aura, all battles 33%. So the other day when this announcement came out, the first thing I did in Gods and Legends chat was slate this champion. I was like, have you ever seen a worse Void Legendary? I was like, she's garbage. However, I've changed my mind. You're backpedaling <laughs> a little bit, yeah? <laughs> backpedaling fully. I'm climbing back up the hill and trying to dig myself out of the hole. Is that because you saw a murder's video? Uh, a bit of that. I and mean, then I kind of sat there for a while and like thought about how you would actually use her. And I think, no, she's, yeah, she's fairly good. Yeah. Yeah, so, so she seems like a pretty enough, good, uh, good like defensive option for for a team to sort of you know support yeah. you through the, through some harder content. Funnily enough, it was actually Saito that made me realize how good her A two is, because for those of you who don't know, Saito's A two, I believe it is. He like buffs himself with like attack up and crit damage up if his defense is higher than the target, which is like mm. he's an attack champion. It should almost never be there. However, like once you've applied death down and stuff, it means like it's actually quite easy to get your defense or whatever higher than theirs. So the interesting part about her A2 is depending on what other debuffers you have on your team, she is your attack up or your sorry, your, your attack down or your death down. So if you bring Ghostborn, she'll function as your attack down. But if you bring, say, Skull Lord, she'll function as your death down, because assuming the other debuff is in place already. So she's like a flex slot. Which I don't think we've got on a champion yet, which is really interesting. Okay. Um, Obviously, yeah. you can go down and have both. So, which, yeah, which and, ability uh, do you guys think is the uh, is the best? Uh, for they're, me, they're all good. 
for me, I would say um, her passive. Yeah. <clears throat> her passive is like her main niche. One of the things that I was a uh, huge shout out to Boomer that's in chat, and he was talking about this champion, and it's a... Uh, you know, it comes down if you want to use this champion on in arena, for example, the placement of where you put this champion. You know, uh, when you're building the team, are you going to put it first or last? If you put this champion last, it makes a big difference on how that passive will work, especially if the team goes first. You know that you're up against and things that are second. I'm sorry, whatever whatever the case is, but it does affect the the placement of where you put this um, champion. Uh, in your one, two, three, or four slot, when you're battling somebody, how this, how that passive interacts, and whether she lives or not. So I think it just adds like, um, I don't know, more interesting dynamics of ways of using champions, especially like with her passive. Yeah. You guys know what yeah, I'm like talking her, about. Her passive is definitely her best, like arena niche. Like, let's be honest, the passive being crits only means that effectively only exists in arena. Right. Like it's gonna it's gonna happen fifteen percent of the time in PvE. So like the passive is definitely arena focused. But I think the A the A two A three again makes a, a very, very robust like Doom Tower support. Cause her A three yeah, is currently, she's robust. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Puts my row on a bust. <laughs> as as Murdering said, so bottoms up is currently the best ally protect. Well, when she's released, it will be currently be the best ally protect in the game right now. Because strengthen is insanely good. So, oh, yeah. like, if, if you're struggling with, like, damage on your team, she's going to be, like, a hard carry. And she's HP, so you can put her in a shield set. Yep, and she's Void. No weak yeah. affinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for I'm assuming you yeah. probably want to take the uh, the Bulwark Mastery for her, and that would just, like, amplify all Almost effects. certainly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so no, would you actually be happy? So if you pulled her from a void shard, right? Void Lego instead of somebody issue. else. Yeah. She is a void. Like I know there I know there are void legendaries that some are incredible, some are the occasional uh, ones are very terrible, but like I mean you have to split it half and half, right? Like half of them yeah. are above average, half of them are below average. Is she gonna be on the above average half? Yeah. I think she's in the middle. I think she's right in the middle. middle. Yeah, so I'm thinking so, like for for faction wars, like if if you don't have Sil, then she could be really useful for that team um, because they're, be fair, they're pretty offensive. Um, and if you don't have the revive, then it's pretty tough to get through it. Yeah. My thing with that is like, if you've not got Sil yet, that means you're sub 180 days, which means you're probably not clearing high level faction wars anyway. True, true. Like, but yeah, like she's definitely good in faction wars. Um, I think she's definitely good in clan boss because you know she's either bringing your three she's bringing your attack down protect. or your death down. Yeah, she's got an amazing ally protect. Her A one kind of sucks to be honest with clan boss, but like, and then the, her passive in clan boss will at least you know prevent you getting like an unlucky crit on a stun or something, and then yeah, like having yeah. someone get one shot. The issue that I see with yeah, Clamboss, though, would be right. her, her cooldowns, though. We don't know if you can reduce those. So five-turn cooldown and a four-turn cooldown. Uh, yeah, not really I, always, I always assume that you... Unless it's like a three-turn cooldown to begin with, I always assume you get at least a minus one turn for the books. Yeah, for the bottom ops, there's nothing else in the kit of the skill. So, I mean, there, it doesn't a, deal like, damage. It, it doesn't debuff, so the only thing that can be is the cooldown. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's good. Like, what's interesting is that her A2, Barrel 3, if you read it, it just places. Like, there's no oh, yeah. percent yeah, chance. It's 100%. So when you book these two abilities, like Azazel says, the only thing you can book is cooldowns. Yeah, so she might actually be pretty friendly in terms of LEGO books in yeah. that regard, because if you can only reduce cooldowns on um, the A2 and A3. We don't and have a whole lot of room for most. Well, I will yeah. be cautious with that. So what they can do for the barrel is add a oh. bunch of 5% yeah, exactly. damage Shackle increases sure, sure. and then hide the cooldown behind them. Almost like six certainly. books. And <laughs> A1 will have like another five. Nine books A1. <laughs> <laughs> 21 books. No, it's 11 books on the A1, 5% chance each time. Hold <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you go, yeah. Yeah, see, I, 
I actually find that it's interesting, like champs that have more books. Like it's it's obviously tougher um, to actually book them, but it just means they've got a much higher ceiling than champs that don't have many. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, know, I, I feel like she's she's super good. Yeah, what I wanted to say is like uh, I remember Azazel talking about he was playing uh, someone's account and they pulled the Sifi right in the beginning of the game and he was able to like go so high in arena just because of that one champion. I feel like this is a similar kind of situation. This champion is gonna hard carry a newer account. Like it's gonna it's gonna really yeah. help people's progression significantly. I feel like she, there's a lot to her kit. I think to uh, to go back to Wantamaz's question about like would you be happy pulling her in a void shard? I think let's say you're a newish account and you've got you know five to ten legendaries, you're clear in stage twenties, you know, but you're still like trying to progress into Ultra Nightmare, still you know trying to get progressing further up towards like the higher end of arena. If you've got zero void legendaries and you pull a shard and you get like gold pop up. In your heart of hearts, you're hoping for, you know, Venus, Hegemon, maybe Tormin, um, Warlord. I, I'm not sure she's up in that, like, that top tier of Void Legendaries. I think she's like a 7 out of 10. I will disagree with a Hegemon on a newer account. Newer account can't use Hegemons. Not, no, not necessarily new, champion. new. But like I'm assuming that like by the time you're even like realistically gonna get one void legendary, I would say the majority of accounts will be clearing stage twenties before they see a single void legendary. So like when I say new, I mean like has less than two void legendaries. I don't know, man. The power of credit card is is, uh, <laughs> is a is a yeah. big one. Ass assuming like without mega whaling. Okay, fair enough. Like an average spender, you know, medium yeah, spender. Look at Boomer go. <laughs> Are you guys watching chat right now? Holy shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah he's out of water. He can't. He can't out, yeah, everyone out. who's watching this spot in the future, you can't see it in the on screen chat, but there's about 60 redemptions of uh, hydrate drink water in the chat. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. Get the water. I'll be back in one sec. I'll get some more. Oh. That's still so good. yeah, I feel like she's she's good, but I'm not sure you'd be happy pulling her. Cause yeah, I mean, I don't uh, think I would. There's, 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 two, there's two sides of the coin. Like you, you should be happy pulling her because she's a good champion. However, she's also like when, when you pull that that gold. Let's be honest, you're hoping for like the god tier, aren't you? Every time, if if you put if you pull an ancient shard tomorrow and you get, let's say. Lanicus, yeah, you're, you're happy, but like you wanted to drake them off, you know. Every you wanted day, Valkyrie. Happily take Every day. Lanicus. I'm super happy with the Lanicus. Me yeah, too. Me too. <laughs> Bad example. Yeah. <laughs> I was just yeah. Lanicus. Yeah. Up. I was, gotta, I was gotta, to give a good but not amazing champ. I was going to give something that's good that's not amazing. Right. Like Bad Elk, Bad Elkazar. Actually, no, a lot of people think Bad Elkazar is god too. So that's a bad choice as well. I'm just going to shut my mouth. <laughs> this is a bad point. I thought it was better than I thought. It sounded good in my head. <laughs> so I, I guess in conclusion, I, I think we all feel like she's going to be a good champion. I personally, like if I open her from a void shard, I would be happy myself. Yeah, But that's because um, we have you have a lot of the good voids already. Yeah, yeah. But if you, even, if you have none of them? I mean, yeah. It, <sighs> First yeah. void Lego, I would be let down, but maybe not quite as bad as like, uh, what what's the... Yeah, it's not, like it's, it's, it's not a physics. Physics. It, it's not physics, a barrier, yeah. you know. It's, she's still she doesn't very good. exist, guys. Just keep, <laughs> let's keep going. <laughs> so this is Baroth the Blood Soaked, a Force Epic HP Barbarian. The A1 attacks enemy two times. The first hit has a twenty percent chance of filling this champion's turn meter by ten percent. The second hit has a twenty percent chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by ten percent. Oh, strong. A2 splattering hack <laughs> attacks one enemy two times. <laughs> The first hit places a shield equal to 25% of the inflicted damage inflicted on all allies for two turns. The second hit heals all allies by 10% of the damage inflicted. Pog. Wow. A3, Serpent Axes. I'm going to read Ascendant because fucking Ascendant champions. Attacks one enemy two times. The first hit has a 75% chance of placing a 50% decreased attack debuff for two turns and 75% chance of removing any increased attack buffs from the target. 
The second hit has a 75% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns and a 75% chance for moving increased defense debuff on the target. Oh my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, so good. Wow. for me, his A1 and A2 are fucking worthless, and then his A3 is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's actually very like, good. <laughs> I don't see why they put such a, like, let's assume that A1 books up to, say, I don't know, 50% chance. That's reasonable, right? So one hit, 50% chance to drain 10%, 50% chance to gain 10%, and then A2. The A2 has to, has to hit ridiculously hard to be good. And then the A3 is, like, attack down, death down, and remove those buffs in the same ability. Like that, the A3 is amazing, and the A1 is just trash. Pretty fucking <laughs> What, what every time so we see a shield, it's always lame. The shield, these place shield abilities on every champion except for Chris always underwhelms me. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like that's what I mean. Like, so and considering it's based on damage dealt, and he's a HP champ, like that needs a crazy multiplier to be good. Because let's say let's say that hits for twenty k, you're getting a shield for what four point five k? No, five k. Sorry, five. Maths. I think we're just so used to um, like the gigantic shields that champions yeah. can get. I, I th honestly think his A two is half decent. Um, yeah, but it's one enemy, guys. Like it's well, yeah, yeah the it's, it's one single it, target. But, it, but it, it does AOE shield and healing. But it's gonna I think like, it's half that's, 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 that's what it, I mean. Like this is it not has to some insane. Hard. This is not some insane end game platinum arena champion that like gives us gigantic shields like yeah, Chris yeah. or shield champions this is like mm. this is a progression type support right he's he's fairly good in like a speed clan boss team yeah but i think the problem with of this champion is his affinity force? um like no doesn't uh, doesn't force clan boss give himself attack up so you actually want to strip clan that's not bad well, they all have attack up, but the, the, do they? I do mean, they? In dungeons, am I retarded? Yeah, they all do. He looks. It could be half decent for Fire Knight for sure. A one decreases turn meter, or potentially yeah. Fire Knight. Yeah, I, by but by no ten percent. Uh, yeah, and it's the low he's, chance. He's okay. That's the chance of doing it. Yeah. He's good on a barb twenty one. I'll probably use this guy. He's better than War Maiden. I should know it's not. He's not Yo, I just got a quad resistance roll. It's a broken piece, but fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's okay. I don't like this power creep of giving champions access to like attack down, death down on the same ability. Oh, <clears throat> Madame Cerise. But at least it's only single target. Yeah, it's literally, it's single he's... target, so it literally doesn't matter. Yeah, I think he's one of those champions where like if you pull him relatively early, he'll probably do work for you. But as soon as you get like a fairly fleshed out epics index, he's just going to fall off. Which is fine. Like that's a, what that happens. With yeah, yeah. Like a he's, account, he's a right? perfectly good middle of the road champion. So like, this is a good champion to to use if they're going to use him as one of the fusions epics. Oh. It's so a good one, one to mess. sacrifice. Oh, yeah. You just you just got a quad resist roll, right? I just yep. got six star legendary HP percent shield boots with resist. Give me your oh. blessing. Good luck, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so Baroth, I think he's he's decent. Yeah, I give him like I give him like a six out of ten. Okay, so the one that lots of people have been talking about, the the little mousy, Fane. Oh, oh so yeah, <laughs> it's Draco. Yeah, um, she's as, she's literally crazy. As do you want to read this one out? Have you got oh, it? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so she's a spirit attack type faction skinwalkers, and A one is attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has 35% chance of stealing 5% of target current turn meter. Uh huh. So, in the total, Amazing. but the current one. Okay. I feel like that'll likely book to 50. Most likely, yes. Okay, so A2 ascended, attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing two 5% poison debuffs and a 50% decrease attack for two turns. On a four turn, four turn cooldown, most likely can be booked to three, or maybe not. Anyways, uh, A three attacks one enemy three times. This is actually an interesting ability. The first hit has seventy five percent chance of placing big decreased defense debuff for three turns. 
the second hit has a 75% chance of placing 25% uh, weaken for three turns. And the third hit heals the champion by 4% of, of her max HP for every debuff on the target. So 40% wait, wait, per debuff. Max. When I read that, I didn't see it was per debuff. For every debuff, that, yeah. So it's 40% max. That's crazy, actually. That's really good. On a five turn, unbooked. So maybe yeah. you can book it to four. She is mental. Very interesting kit. This is like the Drake, new Tayrell legendary, Drake. by the way. Yeah, but Drake. actually, Drake. If, if, Drake. if you have, uh, if you She's have She's the Vizier, MM of this patch. Like, she will still be fantastic without, but if you have a Vizier, suddenly your clan Holy boss, shit. if you get her, your yeah. clan boss team completely changes. Because she, she is everything. everything in one. She is literally every debuff in one champion. So you bring, yeah, you bring her Vizier at counter-attack, then you'd have two spaces to do whatever the fuck you like with. Yeah, two spaces for, like... Like, two pure DPS. Yep. Two gonna be crazy. Nah, two Turvolds. Yeah, I think you can do the... <laughs> bad the Bat Eater comp with her. Yeah, looks like Why it. would you... If you look like Bat Eater... Bat Eater will depend on how hard she hits. She'll be, she'll be able to two-key Bat Eater, but it'll depend yeah, on how hard she hits. Yeah, Relentless, I think you have a... High chance of one key. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't uh, high chance. Like even, even Draco, go. even Draco struggles to high to, to one key. Like you need insane gear to make Draco one key. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're talking about insane gear, right? No, I'm yeah, saying even like, with insane gear, like, like I, I have, uh, I have Venus have to in so hard. Like, almost as good of relentless as my Draco's in, and Venus is, in my opinion, more consistent than Fane. Um, in terms of raw damage with decreased defense, weaken, and then poisons, right? We don't know. Yeah. Multiple well, Venus also has I feel like the even. She's an attack type champion, guys. To what? To one key, attack, Fame yeah. would have. She'd ha she'd have to hit so hard, and purely on the amount of debuff she has, I've got to assume she's not going to hit super hard. Like, look how weak. Oh, but she's Banshee's an attack type champion, though. Yeah, but so, so is Fro so is Frozen Banshee. Mm, isn't she a support type champion? I'm pretty sure she's an attack. Let me check. Uh, one other thing I just want to point out while we're checking. You know, that. she's step attack. Yeah, she's attack. Yeah, she's listed mm, okay, as attack. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Attack type doesn't necessarily mean high damage. Yeah, so the other thing I want to point out as well is uh, <laughs> this champ is going to be great for the world record attempts and skinwalkers. Yeah, oh, that's oh, a yeah. good point. That's true. <laughs> it's going to shake it up. <laughs> we're coming Yeah, she though. is. She's a fucking insane epic. She's so good. So. Like, um, I had a question. So I guess uh, what what would happen if she's one of the fusions? You know, <laughs> she will be. She almost certainly will be. Uh, they've um, never done that. They've never really put yeah, such an insane uh, kid. I don't have they. Sepulchre, 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 yeah, absolutely. You know, what? Uh, I think, sky touch arguably. Uh, Sepulchre, I think, I think it's a if tier that's above. the case, it's in people's interest to actually farm two of her. Yeah. Yeah, so, two of her. yeah I, would, I would certainly find two of them if possible. Get her from the events mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will. I reckon they're that. gonna put her behind the summoning one. You watch. She, yeah, she'll be in the paywall because they know she's the best. I, 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 we're all assuming she's a girl, right? For some reason, I think so. <laughs> I, I don't know much about rats. <laughs> it just looks like a lady mouse. <laughs> it's got a pink skin, I guess. Question. So do I. You racist. <laughs> fucking <laughs> all right you ginger prick get out of the sun but yeah I, I think this 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 mouse rat whatever you want to call it is just mental by far the best epic in the bunch like not even close okay would you consider her something? would yeah. you i'm sorry would you consider her kalari better than the fusion uh it depends if you're an early game account that's like genuinely like if you've not got you know your occult brawlers, your Razin, if you've not got your Frozen Banshee, if you don't have like a solid clan boss roster, she's like an insane boost to your account. And like she's gonna be usable in Spider, she's gonna be usable in Faction Wars, she's gonna be usable in Fire Night as well. More or less everywhere to be honest. And the only place you wouldn't use her is Dragon because of Affinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's really, really good. I can't stress enough how good she is. The only downside to her kit is I'm expecting to see like so, Occult Brawler has, you find this kit, 
The Cup Ball has 826 base defense. But he's a HP champ, so he's got 20k base HP. I'm expecting this champ to have like 14k base HP and like 700 base def. She's, I've, got, I've just got a feeling she's going to be so unbelievably squishy. Yeah, so then she'll... It's, this, she'll it's the only okay way to balance in, that kit. Yeah. So she'd be okay in like a, a double man eater comp or something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're trying to use her in Faction Wars and she's that squishy... Oh, not Faction Wars. I feel like claim boss, then you... you yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like you'll struggle to use her in a regular team without a revive. If you can't get two of her, would I skip that? No, take her TKB. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say. On the one hand, like she's arguably better than the legendary. However, it's signi- significantly harder to get a legendary. So, like, chances are you'll pull this champion again from ancient shards down the line. Yeah, it's fairly likely you'll never have another shot at the legendary, unless you're a whale. Yeah, so, not, like, not I would always legendary. get the legendary. I would always get the legendary. Mm. Okay, let's have a look at the next one, uh, Kaiden. Uh, Manny, do you want to read out this one? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, mate. No problem. So, magic, affinity, epic, defense type, dark elves. Caden. Attacks one enemy, has a 15% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn. So, that probably booked out, I would imagine, they'll probably go to like 35, 30%. Yeah. Which to me, it's Give terrible. Give said. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's terrible. not great, but it's... Yeah, terrible yeah. 8-1, from, in my opinion. Uh, A2, attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack for two turns. Um, pretty sure this will book out to 100%. Decent, I guess. Um, and A3, revives two random allies with 50% HP. And then Ascended, revives two random allies with 50% HP and places a decrease in uh, i'm sorry increase uh defense buff on them for one turn pretty decent i guess um a3 a- well, yeah champ i mean my my issue with this guy is he's not a bad champion but like fan cleric is just better yeah, but I think if you don't have fan cleric then he can help like yeah, yeah. Faction he opens... or, or whatever but I think like we mentioned earlier he seems to be a champion that's going to be good on progression. We won't find any use in the end game except Faction Wars. So, like, and like we say, in Faction Wars, ideally, I think you would use Fang Cleric in his place. But if you're struggling for Dark Elves epics, he's he's an okay champ. He's not amazing. He's not terrible. I think he's just solid middle of the road. I don't think there's too much more to say as kids. I, I would. Forward. I, I would normally praise AOE attack down. Like I think it's for safe to assume that A2 will be 100% chance when booked. Oh, I yeah. would normally praise that. However, Dark Elves as a faction have, a, like, they've got such good debuffers already that if this guy was in a different faction, he'd be amazing. But in Dark Elves, he's just kind of underwhelming. If he was like, I don't know, a lizard man or a barbarian or. Who else is difficult? Like a dwarf? 10 out of 10. Yeah, I think dwarf. But, oh, dwarf, dwarf would be, be insane. Good. Yeah. As a dark elf, he's just meh. Like, dark elves only has the two revivers, I believe. Like, so you've got one's a void Lego in Line Seer. Line and, Fang, Seer. Yeah. and then Fang, um, you know, if you just didn't get him, then this is a fine option. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Very good point right there. Yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I, I think I agree. He's good. He's just. In a different faction, he would have been amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, Sill, or excuse me, sorry, Cantra. Like, I, I don't think Barbarians needed her. I think they need to switch up some of their factions. Else, with these. Yeah. Mm. But I, I don't mind if they inherently, like, specifically make factions have a weakness. Like, I quite like that if you make them sort of unique. If they have yeah. champions that, you know, all, all tiers of champions throughout all of them, then they all feel kind of the same, but just with different skins. So it'd be nice if they like carved out a niche for each one and you're like, oh, okay, this faction has a lot of stun or this faction has a lot of revives or support and you're kind of built like that. But um, yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem like that's the way they're moving, but it would be cool. Yeah, I think he's done that pretty well. Like I'm not, I, I don't think he's bad. I just, I don't think anything particularly special about him. Like he's a solid, he's like, if you pull an ancient shard on your, like let's say you get your weekly ancient shard, you pull it, you get him. And it's like, yeah, he's pretty good. He's like Captain Tamela. She's not bad. There's just nowhere she's amazing. Yeah. 
Deeks, did you have any thoughts on this one? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll move along. Um, so next one, uh, Tuhok the Wanderer. Um, has everyone read one out now? Uh, I'll do it once you want. I'll do it. Yep. So, epic, void, attack type, or um, A1, attack one enemy tw two times. Each hit has a 30% chance of increasing the cooldown of one of the target skills by one turn at random. It increases the cooldowns of all the target skills by one turn if this champion has less than 50% HP when attacking on each hit. So, safe to set probably books to like 50%. Um, decreasing one cooldown at random is it's okay. On A1, um, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, when he's low HP, that's amazing. And this you're going to see a, a recurring theme in this kit. Um, A2, AoE attack has 75% chance, probably books to 100. Chance of placing a decreased speed for two turns. Also places increased speed for two turns in this champion. Heals the champion by 15% if they have less than 50% HP when attacking. So like the A2 AoE speed down is like... It's fairly good. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. Um, the heal is negligible, but he needs to kind of wait self sustain in his kit anyway. Um, then A3 attacks one enemy, steals 50% of the target's current turn meter, has a 75% chance of placing a stun for two turns. Um, if below half HP, steals 100% of turn meter. That is insane. Like, on a first read, you don't realize how good that is. Um, passive, decreases damage taken by 20% when the HP drops below 60%, and it has a 22% ally attack aura in all battles. So the A3, I actually want to target. So those of you who tune into our streams semi-often <laughs> know that we all think Growhack is... We call, call him Godhack. Like, he's a great champion. We love Growhack. Yeah, um, we all do. <laughs> he's good. This A3, so you... Granted, is. Because it's a stun, it's not going to work against bosses. That's a big thing to keep in mind. So assuming he's below half HP, he's going to steal 100% of their turn meter and stun them for two turns. So that one ability is effectively a three-turn CC because mm -hmm. you've reset their turn meter from like potentially full and then it has a two-turn stun when they when they get a turn. Like That's a, that's a three-turn single-target CC if he's below half. I think that's fucking insane. Even if he's not below half, it's still fifty percent of the it's, current. Yeah, and still, it, and still, like the stun happens regardless. So, like, yeah, even if he's not below half, he's still stealing some turn meter, then a two turn stun. So, like, yeah, I think he's good. I think he's really good. I mean, like, we talk about what's her name, Tanix, because she was yeah. just recently released, and she does AOE uh, decrease speed and then some defensive abilities and some healing. Mm -hmm. And myself and other people were saying, hey, she's, you know, she's really good for faction wars. This guy has that. And then also this incredible A3 with ceiling turn meter, uh, like absolutely incredible champion for faction wars. Yeah, I think he's like, it's going to take some kind of testing and practice with him to kind of work out, I think, where he's very good. But I think he's potentially quite good in Fire Knight. Um, going to be good in faction wars. What, uh, what affinity is he again? He's void. He's void. void. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're really struggling, I guess you could use him in Spider, because it's 100% turn me down, but like that's a stretch. I, I, I think he's solid. He, he would look half um, decent in Spider as well. I mean, a, AoE, decreased speed. Yeah. And then, you know, turn me... Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think he's... I, I don't want to jump the gun and say he's amazing straight away, because like he might come out and be crazy squishy and do no damage. At which point he's like significantly less impressive. But like assuming his damage is at least fairly good, like at least a decent level, and he's not like made of paper, I think he's solid. So we have uh, two champions already that you're going to want to get uh, the epic version and all the rares if they're both a fusion. I don't know if I would say that, but for this no? guy. No, I probably I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't I wouldn't risk losing a legendary for this guy. Like I would definitely take a legendary over him. I think right, it's one of those but... kits that's like he's interesting to play with, but like you might not use it that often in like a speed run. Yeah, but I think yeah, like it's, it's not just any legendary; it's a void legendary. So your chance to get a void legendary is just so low. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't recommend skipping for any of them. The, 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 the fusions, the fusions of spirit, mate, is not void. 
Oh, the, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was thinking about the um, the this one. <laughs> I was thinking about her. Be, uh... She's she's actually pretty good. Yeah, no, no. The, the future's Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. No, what I, what I was basically saying mm. is that you have the mouse that people are, you know, we're already saying that you should try to go for the epic version if this is going to be a fusion plus all the rares so you can have an extra copy. I was saying this may be a champion that it might be worth to have that extra copy for as well if they have two ways of getting this champion. Three yeah, bags. I mean, yeah, okay, it, it wouldn't hurt to have a spare, but I, I wouldn't yeah. like, I wouldn't break the bank over it. You know, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, from most fusions though, like you just get the champs from doing events, and you, so you'll only end up with really one copy of them, like just historically. So I mm, think it's pretty right. hard to be getting multiples to be able to fuse multiple um, epics. Uh, it depends on how they do it, but just thinking about how they've done it in the past. Yeah, like I think yeah, I think he's a solid champ, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go out of your way to get him. I think he's one of the fun. he's like Whisper. They're like their kit is fairly good. It's just hard to find a reliable use for them. Hey, leave Whisper alone, mate. We um <laughs> we just decimated um faction wars with her. Yeah. Twenty one. That's what I'm saying. Like she's she's, she's really a reasonably well good champion. Yeah. yeah, but like if if like we're saying this champion's only going to really be used in faction wars, and then like if you're really struggling in Spider, I definitely would not suggest getting a legendary for him. Like, Fane is way better than this guy. Yeah, definitely. Although this guy is interesting. I'm just uh, also trying to think ahead. Like, you know, let's just say there's like a really, really annoying, uh, you know, a stage in Doom Tower where like this one mob, it's like, it's really difficult to deal with. I mean, yeah. that stun right there kind of like really helps out, you know, just forward thinking a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for sure, it's, it's worth keeping an eye on it. Yeah. Yeah. So would he be usable, you think, like in a like semi unkillable type comp? Like doesn't have to be clan boss, but if you had some way to keep his health low by keeping him alive with unkillables? Um so probably not, because typically you only use unkillables versus a boss. Mm. And there's nothing in his kit that's particularly good against bosses. Yeah, that's fair. Oh the turn meter. Well, yeah, but like, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of time to drop turn here, though. Yeah. Like if you, if, like, I feel like the, the two turns stun is a big part. Like A three, not the turn meter drop. Like those two things combined make it great. If it's just turn meter drop, it's like, it's okay. So yeah, I feel like it depends on if he hits hard. It'd be a whole different story. And he is attack based, so we'll see. But uh, for now, I'm kind of, I'm excited, but I'm kind of, you know, reserving my judgment for now. I don't want to get too excited too early. You get too excited too early. <laughs> you know what happens. <laughs> so yeah, um, do any of the rares stand out to you guys? Uh, yeah, I found a couple interesting ones. There's a dwarf yeah. with a decreased speed debuff on his kit from mm. rares. And Turmir. Mm. And a heal. And, and a poisons. heal. That is huge yeah. for that faction. Inform. That faction needs a desperate help in anything other than legendaries, and they pretty much got it. Yeah, I think he, I think I think you're right there. He he fills a niche that the dwarves are really struggling with. This is just for the faction wars, for the entire faction. So people now have a more or less accessible champion in 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 face of the regular rare, not even void, mm -hmm. uh, who can fill a lot of roles for them and another one was orc i think it was a void orc like his kit is okay what makes you say that i'm rereading what, what, the what, game what, like... <laughs> so decrease attacks okay um, um but the because of chances his uh, i think it's because of his uh passive uh increase type of decrease cooldown it's like decreases depending on how hard he hits he might be a decent damage dealer to a single target. To, really to, to me, that, that reads as like that, that reads as like a, ro work. a rubbish rotos. <laughs> like <laughs> if if that hits really hard, then maybe. But like he is a rare stuff. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, but if you read it, what happens is um, the skill resets if he's below fifty percent. 
but then when you want to use it, he, that means he's below 50%, so then you only get the smaller effect on the A2. Yeah, good point. I don't think he looks good at all. Like it, yeah, no, if, if for some reason, if for some reason that A2 hits like a truck, then there's, there's a bit of potential. Yeah. Yeah, like this, this is a fairly unique passive, like the fact that you can reset. Um, but um, yeah, okay, it depends then, yeah, on what the A2 does. Work. I guess I didn't read his kit carefully. We forgive you. No, like when when I read through it, I, I thought about that that yeah. reset as well. But then yeah, I realized that the you know the A two wants you to have a hundred percent, but then this one wants you to be uh, below fifty percent, and you can't really be both unless you had him in live steel, so that somehow you healed when you're below and came back around to being full. But it's pretty pretty situational. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah. So there's there's also a um, Dolor Lawkeeper. It's another dwarf that has um, it's got a continuous heal and a block debuffs, which isn't amazing. But like, if you don't have a second rear guard sergeant for twenty one, this guy could potentially do some work for you. It's not huge, but it's like a it's like a it's he's not he's not like an immediate chicken at least. If you scroll to the top of the rare list, Draconis Boomer for some reason is convinced that he looks like me. I don't see it. That's like, probably Boomer his was... dreams. He wants yeah, you to Boomer was... that. <laughs> Boomer was like, he's got hair. And I was like, yeah, I also have hair. He's, like, he's got a beard. Like, yeah, I also have a beard. Like, is, is that it? <laughs> it looks nothing like me. Like, I guess he has kind of a big nose. <laughs> he's got kind of a big nose. <laughs> so you just be a bit rude, really. Yeah, I can see <clears throat> the absolute slightest it. resemblance, but... <laughs> Boomer is just racist. I gotta oh, say, though, the, the, the Draconis Fire's kid sucks. Yeah, he's awful. He's it really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think that, that was so part terrible. of Boomer's meme as well. Saying that uh, Kalari wasn't even good enough to be made into a, a legendary. Yeah, made me into a rare. <laughs> <laughs> even epic. <laughs> and a shitty fucking rare at that. <laughs> this so he's an undead rare. Oh, sorry, undead hordes, void attack. Um, attack one enemy. Places a small chance to place a stun, increasing per debuff on the target. Yeah, it's um, not that good. A2 yeah. is AoE small death down and has an AoE, it's like small chance of AoE fear, which is okay. And then the passive heals this champion every time you kill a target. Like you or your team kills target. So I feel like he might be okay. But he so works before... the way that other champions work. They would have to already be under decreased defense for the fear, right? Yeah, that's what I was just about to ask. Oh. Mm. Either way, he's like he's an AOE. Like it's it's only the small death down, but like you'd be surprised how good that is in faction wars still. Yeah. Mm. I don't think undead have an AOE death down. Do they? Uh no. Other than the Suzerain has a chance. Oh, Suzerain, but like yeah, right. But like it but like it's it's weakened and if the weakened fails then he does death down. So like it's not reliable. So like it's okay. That's just like a one small like you might not you might want to vault this rare rather than use him as a chicken. So I guess the next thing that we're going to do anyway is um, questions from chat. So if anyone's got any any thoughts or comments or you know you want to get some feedback from us, feel free to uh, to ask the question. Lydia, uh, uh, Ethan, <laughs> um, when two point three, it's she's confirmed for two point three. We don't know exactly when two point three is though. Soon. Soon. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I guess in, in regards to uh, rare books, I mean, the big question that's like, now will there be more other books or just like more potions, you know, so, <laughs> like what's happening with the rare book replacement? It will, it will depend how their drop tables calculated. So it seems to be calculated that like gems and uh, like gems and brews are their own section. Potions are their own section. Gear is its own section. And then shards and books are their own section. So, like, so, in theory, if you reduce the chance of a rare book, you slightly increase the chance of, like, epic legendary. Yeah, but we they, don't so know from, if things are on the same drop table. No, no. So when I looked at the um, the leak of the JSON file, which had all the drop rates for uh, shards, which had ability multipliers and whatever, um, 
assuming they've kept the same standards that they did back then in August 2019, they set everything out explicitly with a set drop rate. So take, for example, the pool of um, Void Legendary Champions. Way back then, they were like, uh, I'll round it, but let's say there were 10. So they would say Champion A, you know, is chance 0.1. Champion B chance. is 0 .1, yeah. 0 0.1. And they and list them all out one by one. So I assume it might be a similar case. And for the clan boss drops, it might be, you know, Lego Book uh, 0.09. Uh, rare book 0 0.2 or whatever it is, right? I assume it's going to be like that. So if they do remove the rare books, they're almost certainly going to have to put something else in there or buff up the rates of everything else. Well, what yeah. is that? Signa, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher his name. Uh, Signori saying crafting materials will replace rare books. I don't know if that's official. We've, we've heard mm. no official, official confirmation. It's a possibility, but we've heard no yeah. confirmation. That's true. Mm. Yeah, okay. It would be nice if they put in some of the um, what's the the one that you use for uh, Swift Parry gear? That really rare one that comes from Core Hammer. Core Hammer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it'd be nice like if you had that. Actually. Because yeah. I actually don't mind that. I'm I'm fully expecting it to be they remove the chance at rare books, and then they like oh yeah, so the chance the rare books removed that means you have a slightly higher chance of getting everything else. It would not surprise me if on the back end they raise the chances of um, potions, pen gems, brews, and like maybe an ancient shard to fill that slot. I do not expect the legendary book chance to significantly increase with this. No. I would be incredibly no. impressed if we see any realistic change to the drop table of the stuff we care about. Yeah, no, uh, agreed. Um, I uh, I think one question that's there that um, it's actually a really interesting question because I do kind of we don't we don't talk about this ever, and actually it's a good time to talk about it. Uh, mm. Tag team arena. What is the future? I mean, it, it was fun trying to push up, you know, have that little four month tournament, whatever you want to call it, and now nobody's really complaining because they're all dropping down to zero points. Easy farming teams. Um, you know, that, like it's, it's the just, future. That is the future. Free, free stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, tag team arena. That, that's all I do it. is I buy Drexler fragments, two accessories every day, and then I buy the energy, ancient shard, void shard, and book on cooldown. That's it. That's all I do. Lego book, legendary book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I so buy like, the, at the minute, sacred shard. Yeah, uh, pretty much everything yeah, that Glory said, I, but the yeah. shard instead of the book. I, I, I bought a sacred a... because it was two X, but like I would normally buy the book. But are you guys happy with the way it is? I mean, it's okay. At least, at least you get like guaranteed rewards. Okay. But like, I feel like things like the energy cooldown, the ancient shard cooldown, they're way too long. Like a, a week for three hundred energy? Are you insane? It's three hundred energy. That's like literally five minutes. That's two and two and a half energy refills per week. I just feel like we have to keep in mind that like um, that's the bronze tier stuff. So people who are actually in bronze or maybe silver, yeah, um, like if they get win in bronze, uh, how many how many bars? Let's say you're in gold three. Uh, sorry, bronze three. You get ten bars per win. So that's what that's a hundred wins. It would be, it would be wins. fifteen, right? Yeah. So that's that's thirty wins to get yourself those. those. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's well. No, no, it would be a lot more than thirty wins, wouldn't it? Hold on. So no, no, it's it's ten bars per like per one in three, right? Per, per oh like, yeah, sorry, sorry. It's 30, I was doing 30, the, yeah. thirty if you get a three zero. Yeah. So yeah, it would take you like a hundred wins. Wait, no. Hold on. Meanwhile, we can do like 30, 33 wins, seven or eight or something like that. Yeah, and so, so guess, it's just yeah, like I guess they're struggling for bars more. Yeah, I, I feel again, like if they get... just if they made it like a one day cooldown or something like that, then all of a sudden those of us in gold are buying that every single I don't know. It would yeah, just true. I think so that my, it would my, make people really unhappy. My counter argument to that is if you're in bronze, um you get how it you get twenty twenty tag tokens per day. So that's sixty fights. Let's assume you can win seventy five percent of your fights. I don't know, let's, let's go. For, let's go for two out of three. Let's go for sixty-six. See, so win, win two, lose one. You're getting how many? Is that so forty. Yeah. So you're getting four hundred bars per day. So every three days you can buy energy shard, and then every three days after that you can buy energy. So and they have week a week cooldown. 
Yeah, so every, every, every week, week you're, getting, you're getting a surplus of like six hundred, like you know, about six hundred bars. And like rare books aren't worth buying. Rank three chickens are like, let's be honest, not worth buying. So like, if you're in bronze and stuck there, you, you're running a surplus on bars, and there's no way for you to re- get rid of them to a worthwhile goal unless you think three star chickens are worth it. But that's fine, right? You you run a surplus and you just save them for when you eventually make it to silver, which you, you suppose, know, expect yeah. to make it at some point, right? It just feels underwhelming. Like if you're on bronze and spending, let's say, thirty minutes using all of your and like thirty minutes is a generous estimate, using all of your tag tokens per day, every week you get one ancient shard and three hundred energy for like thirty minutes a day is what, three and a half hours a week for one ancient shard and two energy refills? a bit shit right yeah yeah even now like i i can't be bothered spending the time to, yeah. to do those battles at least, i do five, at five least battles there has to be a cooldown on on the things because yeah, it's going to put be even the bigger gap between should be shorter. upper tier people and what if the cooldowns were different per tier like uh i'm not sure maybe but then like is that is that pay to win or is that benefiting you for being low like, i feel like it's a bit of a risky step there and in fact there should be there should be more stuff in the bazaar there's just not enough stuff in it right now yeah i feel like they might add stuff later but like it'd be good if there was something that was unique there so therefore you actually had to spend well there's time the accessories there. They're yeah unique. but they're easy to get you don't you don't really have to do many fights to get those yeah, like yeah, depending on where you are them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's it's not a bad like implementation. It's just a bit boring. It's boring. Yeah. Okay, there's a new charm pack that they just sent out. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, and Don't what what is bother. what is up with like all these speed packs, like all these packs offers, oh, everything? Yeah, it just feels like a good so quickly. So just to to before we get into speed pack, because I feel like we're gonna run for a while. On the topic of the charm pack, did any of you guys pick up the charm pack from last time it came up? Yeah, Sorry, about the, yeah. the the last one, the. The bigger one yeah however i will not be buying this one because i'm assuming like you oh sorry i'm assuming you guys like no, me accuracy. you have a priority on crafting perception sets right yeah oh yeah and i'm assuming that you guys like me so for example right now i have 2452 uh magisteel bars from arena 6000 by the way i have 883 legendary bloodstone and i have one Epic Bloodstone, because when you clear high level faction wars, <laughs> epic you don't you are. don't get epic ones. <laughs> so I currently what? can't. Your bulk of I currently fifty four epic Bloodstone. Yeah, but how many legendary do you have? Nine hundred and ninety. Well, you've been not been fucking doing say twenty ones, have you? No, well, I do twenty one every time. Two. I have. So here, I'll, I'll come. I'll come. Sometimes you get like a, maybe maybe I'm just like horribly yeah, yeah, unlucky. An important thing to note is when you craft something, it uses twice as many epics as legendaries. So yeah. if you've been crafting a lot, you're going to deplete your epics a lot faster than you deplete the legendaries. But guys, what's happening with me, correct me if I'm the only one, but I'll clear stage 21 or 20 and I'll get 70 epics. Yeah, but that's like one in 10 oh, times. It's between like 70 and 120, I think. Yeah. yeah you, you, you get legendary way more often than you get, get epics. So I've crafted like, in terms of perception, right, I've passed maybe 10 or 15 items at most. Like literally only when it's a daily requirement on the quest, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting on 570 epics and I've got over a thousand of the legendaries. There is yeah. definitely a shortfall of them if you complete high level faction laws. And the, the issue is, is that I understand why they did it. So they was, they're assuming that like people have a bunch of mid-level faction wars and then like one or two fully cleared. So they want to reward you for doing your high level clears. They'd be like, hey, look, we're going to give you extra bits of this legendary stuff because you've put in the effort to do, say, high elves 21 while you're only doing undead hordes 15. So like, but they, they want to give you a reward. realize that there's like 10 sweaty nerds <laughs> doing well, 21 you, speed clears world record. Let, let's level. assume you get to the end game. Actually. <laughs> it, it, it actually punishes you for being I, end game. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is only an issue for a handful of people. It's, it's a full on it's a full on whale problem. But yeah, like, this Perhaps is a way of podcast. people are, are going to be, you know, <laughs> in this area. Doing, yeah, doing it's, it's, it's a it's a very much like pity me. I am the one percent, but fuck you. I am the one percent. One percent. I don't think we even like a fraction of one percent. No, yeah, I never, but like you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> Just I'm stirring the pot, ready for the YouTube comments. Free to play. Hate. 
bring it on. Yeah, <laughs> bring so, it my so way. Cage, Cage Keeper asks a, a legitimate question. He says, why don't you just do the lower tier uh, faction war stages? Because like, that the makes glyphs sense. are way still more glyphs. Glyphs. glyphs are more important. Glyphs are the a, most important. Yeah, 100%. I would take a six star glyph over like a really nice world perception piece. Here. I would rather have a single six star speed glyph than make a hundred perception pieces. Um, so there was, there was another question in chat um, from uh, Kathias. Um, he was asking, is there a reason to do 21 over 20? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's anyone that's not Kalari? <laughs> anyone that's not Kalari? Easy. You get up. <laughs> I get excited. <laughs> You get a fifty percent chance, fifty uh, percent higher chance to get the six star glyph. So it's ten percent versus fifteen. So it's ten percent for the stage twenty and fifteen for stage twenty one, which is, is a big deal. Is that official? Yeah, it is. What? No, it's not official. It's, by official, but it's, it's based on data collection. Yeah, yeah. It's based on a big sample of data. Oh, yeah, gotcha, so gotcha. More, more, more than a thousand runs uh, were collected by RRDD, mm -hmm. and um, quite a few of the guys in, in chat submitted stuff for him, and um, yeah, he totaled it all together to see what the drop rates were, and just from the statistical analysis, over a thousand runs is probably, you know, good enough to get a, a rough idea, and it was trending towards the um, 21 was better. That's so, that's significant, though. Five more percent is, is a I lot. Think a, I think he's a nearly yeah. 2K. We've got, we've got a load of data now. Like, the 1K runs is... That was months ago at this point. I think we're probably closer to the 2K by now. Okay, sure. Yeah, but uh, he didn't make another video, though. Oh, yeah. The oh, video he made okay, was yeah. from... Yeah. I, th I, th I think, he, I think he's still tracking it, though. But yeah, he hasn't made a video again. I'm still if, submitting. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, if he's still tracking, I should be submitting my times. I thought he sort of finished it. I've been slacking, not going to lie. But I think he is still tracking it. Um, oh, somebody okay. answer Asmilia question. <laughs> yeah. Um, Deeks, take it away. I'm, no, I promise not to be toxic. Deeks, take it away. I gotta, no, I can't do it. I, I can't defy the arena god <laughs> Chosen, okay? So Chosen did like 200 runs or whatever and put a video out while we're all DMing him saying, hey, look, we got a whole Deeks. bunch of data. Would you like to he use it? He fucking ghosts us. Runs. 96, 96 runs. Well, so, it's, yeah. it's yeah, nearly so. 100, so you got like 1%, right? 1% for each run. A, so it must be right. He had, a, <laughs> he had a significantly smaller sample size. And had skew results. Went out of our way to try and give him data, and he ghosted it. So, hmm. so yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, those of you who least... watched that video, twenty-one out of thousand twenty is the simple takeaway. <clears throat> so okay, so that's good. So five percent more. Um, Payne Seer, you you made a really nice article uh, inside of Gods and Legends in regards to the Forge. Could you be kind enough to share um, that information with everybody here? Um, I think it was great, and I think a lot of player base will like gain some knowledge from it. Yeah, so that was based on, um, I guess, last podcast. If you guys uh, are new, then we'll, we'll just run over it again. So, so Manny and Infinite sort of pointed out, oh, Manny in particular pointed out that Core Hammer is is the like the rarest of all the materials. So it's pretty important to um, to make sure you use that really well. So ideally, what you want to do is um, is if you've got charms available, um, particularly if, like if you're in plat arena, which is a very small minority, um, it's maybe less of a priority because you get um, the swift parry and deflection gear from uh, plat arena. But if you don't, then it's quite difficult to be able to get it. So you do want to prioritize using your rank charms. So it's debatable to where you are exactly, but we both uh, like. Swift Parry and Perception are both um, really important sets, and I think they stand like heads and shoulders above the other two sets. Um, yeah, it's way better. So I'd say that yeah, they're just not even on the same on same tier. So these ones are, are way down, and I only craft this one because I have materials for it. I'll, I'll never craft Deflection. Um, so. So Swift Parry, you're really limited by whether you're um, competing in tournaments and events. Um, so you'll probably only be able to craft one gear, uh, like one piece every now and then. So then with your leftover materials, um, you should be prioritizing perception. 
after you've done perception and then um, you'll have leftover stuff for resilience. Um, you should never really have materials for deflection. <clears throat> yeah, so, and uh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, you're right. What were you going to say, Manny? No, so like <clears throat> just um, I guess the importance of using charms, if you, if you don't buy packs and you don't have that many charms, to always prioritize using them on your swift parry, I would think is optimal. Yep. You know, and I guess with swift parry, what you're kind of looking for is speed charms and crit rate charms, right? Those are like the most optimal. Resist. I would say. Resist? No, I'm joking. Swift so like, parry. Uh, for, I don't know if it's exclusively for damage dealers, so, but if you're yeah. if you don't have a, if you don't have like good reliable quote unquote good reliable access to it, like finishing plat, like we do, and even us, a lot of us don't have like more than that a sucks. singular, even half decent set. You would probably want to focus on making a more damage dealer one, I would think. But uh, it's a really versatile set that can be used different right. ways. So, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And like, I just just to let you guys know, I think uh, what this has come out. This is the third week that the crafting has been out. I have not crafted a single item at all yet, and I uh, I've, I've, missed... done, I've done a few. You don't have the quests? There's quests, yeah. Yeah, I don't do the quests. So, <laughs> so, so, so Manny, just Manny, just for the quests. Um, just because you're, you're sleeping on it, just go to this one, and if you've done your one star runs, then just go and craft this and then sell it. Um, yeah, that way yeah. you complete your quest. There's like yeah, there's no point like not to shit versions. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I didn't think about that. I'll definitely be doing that. The, the whole like, reason like why I thousand. haven't. Yeah, the whole reason why I haven't uh, crafted any item yet is I wanted to wait until thirty days just to be able to kind of see what all I can craft. Uh, without crafting anything just to kind of see a, like a small sample size of the difference and so far from what I could tell I can craft and I missed 10 fell hammer I missed quite a few fell hammers like in the champion training and stuff like that so I have a hundred fell hammers so I, that means 10 swift parry pieces so far um, in five six stars and then in perception I can do over a hundred so easily over a hundred pieces so it just goes to show you like how rare uh, Swift Parry is and like how you should really prioritize, um, you know, your best charms and things like that on there. And I definitely think that deflection and resilience should be your second option versus uh, perception and Swift Parry. Yeah. So let's just quickly go through um, the, the substats. Oh, maybe before we do that. So in terms of the um, the type, so, so your weapon, your helm, um what what's your what's everyone's strategy towards doing that maybe we'll ask uh one ms yeah, i've been doing uh i i strictly craft perception i don't give a shit about swift parry i have enough pieces deflection sucks we know it and resilience is not end game so what i've been doing is i've been using as so i'm going against what manny's saying i use my charms i use rank rarity what i've been doing for now what i'm trying to do at least is i am doing i'm going to do two different things I'm going to do boot charms and then with the speed or excuse me with the accuracy charm for the substat because um or at least my thought process behind it is um rather than trying to get like top row pieces weapon helmet shield where I need both speed and accuracy substats on it I'm going to rather go for boots where they can main stat speed and I just need an accuracy substat and then a chest piece where it will main stat accuracy and all I need is a speed substat so I will use all of my accuracy charms with boots and all of my speed charms with chess pieces. Yeah, it's interesting. That's my uh, thought process, at least. Interesting strategy. Like the, I guess the counter argument for that. Like I, I think it definitely holds weight. But um, my thing is that like if you're targeting the bottom row, you're going to lose a lot of pieces. But I guess what your strategy is that if you get that one, then um, it'll be good. Whereas going for the other one, you need two. You need two. Well, like all the ones I'm, that are I'm, just I'm doing the same thing. So I'm, like I'm, my, I'm using all mine's perception at the minute, and I'm doing boot charms with accuracy glyph, accuracy like charms as well. Yep. In the hopes of getting six star speed boots with accuracy sub. Um, and then if I happen to get, say, gloves that have accuracy, they can still be good. So like, yeah, it's like not I got complete waste. I still don't have boots, but I got a I got a six star epic weapon with speed and accuracy on it and a triple rolled accuracy. 
So nice. now I just need uh, it'll still be very difficult for me to get enough pieces to start replacing things on my madam. But that's like this is ultra end game trying to forge these pieces for this for the absolute minimal, not probably not even well not minimal, but for like medium levels of stat increase, right? Which is going to be incredible. I'm still going to need a shit ton of glyphs for these things. It's still going to take an incredibly long time, but that's what this is for when you're ultra end game. So. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're saying do the do the chest um, with strictly speed. for perception. Yeah. Yeah. Chest with speed and boots with accuracy. Yeah. I, I I like that. That way, because all those other pieces where you only get one sub, they're not that useful. You you yeah. Because really if you just to... roll yeah just accuracy or just speed on a top row piece for us, that's not going to cut it, right? Yeah. So I guess just before we move on to anything else, um, I just wanted to go through each one of the sets and just suggest what um, uh, what substat charm you might want to use for it. So Swift yeah, yeah. Parry, um, what's everyone thinking for that? Speed, crit, crit damage, attack okay. percent, resist. Honestly, there's almost pretty much everything apart from accuracy. I would say Swift Parry is fine. Really, you'd, you'd use... Uh, I, I don't know that I'd want attack percent because if, if you get that, then that's one spot that you're not getting speed or crit rate. Yeah, but like if you, if you run out of crit rate, then attack's like still pretty good. Like You would still prioritize crit, crit, damage, speed. But assuming you don't have those, like attack percent is fine. Okay, what what do you think, Deeks? Swift parry? Yes. Uh, what about it? Which substat charms would you be using for swift parry? Uh, probably crit rate and speed. Depending, yep. I suppose, like what gaps I have in my existing gear. Okay, so we've always basically said you you shouldn't really fuse deflection um, because you'll just never have the core hammer to do it if you're always crafting swift parry. Um, so then the next one is resilience. What um, what subs should we be using for that one? Um, as I will actually not use any subs for resilience. Just craft it as it is, and hope for the best. Okay, so my counter to that is if you're using your speed and your um, crit here and then on like for Swift Parry and as we already talked about when Modemus was, um, was talking, you want to use speed and accuracy here. Then what happens is you end up like this where you have uh, 92 crit damage charms because you've never used any of them. Um, and so then you kind of like saying, well, what am I using that for? You've got resist charms, you've got defense charms, you've got HP charms. So you'll end up, if you're not using them, then they're just going to stack up. So for I me... Mean, in this case, yeah, of course. But Yeah, I would just like death or HP. Maybe accuracy, but you want to prioritize accuracy on perception. Yeah, well, I've been Because it's, it's, it's a tank set, right? Yeah, I've been using resist as primary, but now that it's run low, I've moved over to defense and HP. So I think mm -hmm. any of those three are, are valid choices. But yeah, for perception, you really want to prioritize your accuracy only for this set, and then um, speed. Right? Speed. Well, either speed or accuracy, but accuracy first right. because you want speed for swift parry as well. So you're gonna to have to yeah. split, split between the two. So accuracy is always going to perception. Speed yeah. can go between either swift parry or perception, uh, and then you're gonna have crit rate on swift parry. And then um, your defense, HP, and and uh, resilience, uh, resistance. Sorry, on the resilience set. But then that kind of leaves uh, crit damage and attack without much of a home. But as Kalari said, you could possibly put them on swift parry, um, and that would be able to use up all your charms. Because otherwise, you'll just end up with a surplus of one of them that you never use. Right. Here's a question. Let's say, for example, you're about to craft a perception piece and you don't have any speed or accuracy charms, like hypothetically, would you use a charm that's not one of them pieces? Because that's technically going to reduce your chances of having the two, the two subsets you want. So if you, are, if, you are, if you have a zero accuracy, zero speed, would you put a crit rate charm on perception gear? Uh, seems good. Go ahead, I you. wouldn't. I, I yeah. think that decreases your chance because it's increasing the chance of taking up one of the four subset slots with a subset right. you don't care about. Um, yeah. I wouldn't craft gear if I didn't have all four pieces available. That's sort of the approach I think I'm going to go with. I am currently just hoarding, as I said before, but 
if I can't use rank rarity the slot I want, maybe I don't need to care about like boots first chest, but if I can't have at least uh, rank rarity and the subs that I want, I'm not going to craft the gear. I'll just wait until I get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody... I didn't think you would. I just thought that was a point worth mentioning. Mm. Someone in the chat asked if this pack is worth it. Uh, this this charm pack. Yep. So I'll pull up. <laughs> the, I'll pull up the pack just so uh, everyone can see. Um, it's a hard question to answer when somebody asks, "Is it worth it?" You know. It's kind of hard to say it's early because yeah. we've not seen the forge that much yet. So after buying the packs, though, I found that I have like a huge excess on charms. Um, as you saw there, um, I've got a ton of all the charms right now. But I guess for this one, it has uh, speed, which is nice. Um, but it doesn't have oh, accuracy. I realized. No accuracy. Accuracy. Um, have we talked about the dragon tournament? No, so we can probably do a, a wrap up on that, on how everyone sort of went with it and what your thoughts were. Um, it's still got 18 hours to go, but um, you, you, I, you I sort of lost interest. Right, yeah, you yeah, so I could do it in a minute. Um, one minute do is a, sort of my time. Show us a run. Show us a run on stream. Give um, some content. <laughs> I, I took some gear off my Ray, but you guys can talk while I, I chuck a little bit of gear on her. So, yeah, like I think we all, we all did it, right? Yep. Yeah, pretty much. I'm, I'm still doing it because some guy in my group's getting sweaty and I can't let that happen. My ego. Oh, yeah. Are you, are you trying to win? <laughs> yeah, just the local tournament. I just, I got to the void charging. Gave up. I'm on 11k points. Jesus what the Christ, fuck? That's too... Why? 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 <laughs> because I don't let people beat me in tournaments. But like, oh, <laughs> not yeah, after so... Lissandra. It's not going to happen again. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's relentless gear. Actually, I, wait, I'm, I haven't heard this before, PTSD. Dude, What happened? No, so when the Lissandra to um, champion reward came out for a champion training event, uh, the right. local tournament one, like back in February or whatever it was, um, I pushed really hard for it, like 55k really points. I think it was before. Yeah, yeah, I, I pushed really whatever, hard yeah. for it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, some guy started pushing as well, and I was like, oh, look, he just you know shot up like 5, 10k points ahead of me. I probably shouldn't just keep spending resources. It's, you know, it's a champion, whatever, right? And then he won it. And then a couple months later, I sort of, you know, I got a lot better in Arena, and I'm like, holy fuck, I wish I had Lissandra. So, I've oh, got so you this. just, it wasn't like some super close competition and he snaked it. You just, well, no, yeah, he just like gradually caught up and then overtook me, and I just sort of wrote it off as like, yeah, you know, it's just the champion, whatever. Oh, and so no, now I just have these constant memories of everyone I see myself in second place. I'm reminded of that tournament. <laughs> I, I actually have a, I, I have a similar story, actually, but. The last champion training event that I ever competed in was Lissandra. It wiped me out, bro. Yeah, I'm saying. It wiped me <laughs> out. I never wanted to do one ever again. I didn't care what the reward was. I just stopped doing it altogether after that. Because, I mean, I, I needed like 80, 90,000 points in my group to beat to, to get her, and I wanted I her so like... bad. <laughs> so, I'm also burnt out on champ training, and I only had to get 35k. <laughs> Yeah, so, no. I did a third of what you did, and I was like, "Fuck this, never again." Oh, did yeah, you guys, did you guys so go for the um, skull crusher one? No, but that was a thing a few months ago. No, I intentionally I, didn't do it. I intentionally <laughs> didn't do it too. We made a post about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't in GNL at the time, but I, I, I think Murder posted, and I was like, "Hell yeah, dude! I totally agree." Yeah, we. we so should... I, somebody won mine with like. 15,000 I think so that that was that seemed pretty low to me so I was like hey I think somebody who actually wanted skull crusher who is not some mega whale who just did it because it was like it was quite a few Someone legendary books with yeah. him wasn't it yeah yeah like, um, like, like two, two or, or something yeah yeah so I was like hey Plus like so I don't know like I gave myself a pat on the back I was like hey man I didn't ruin this guy's day so <laughs> yeah I, th I think I had like I got maybe like 2k points in that tournament I did nothing for it I didn't even try because I, like, I, I was like I already have Valkyrie so like I don't give a shit I'm not gonna, like you said, I'm not gonna ruin someone's day when they actually need a counter attack. Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 a good juju right there. So um, the dragon tournament, I mean, I so I vent a lot. Usually, I vent in my mod chat because I don't like to be toxic really? publicly. Um, and uh, I kind of like was venting that the rewards are kind of shit, to be honest. And then Kolari tried okay. to change. Yeah, uh, Kolari uh, tried to change my mind on that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just I feel like it's a, such a niche tournament, and I mean to go thirty three hundred points for a void shard. 
Mm. I, yeah, I think context so... is important, right? If you're an end game yeah, player yeah, and you can just literally throw in your champions as we've done, no worries, easy shard. If yeah, you're mid game towards a late game and you have to re gear champions or level up, whatever it is, champions, it's not worth it for a fucking void shard. So, the, the reason I thought it was like not crazy is because of the faction it is. Like, the only faction that would have been easy would have been high elves. Mm. Yeah. So, keep in mind that, like, most people have a KO leveled. Most people have at least one Cold Heart leveled. You know? So there's, like, two great chances already. You know? And let's be honest. Dark Elves, like, a lot of people have Madame Cerise leveled. They're, they're one of the strongest faction rosters in the whole game. In terms of, like, epic rares. Like, they're so good. So, if this had been, like, Skinwalkers, then, yeah, it would have been ridiculously hard to be able to be in tournament like this. But I think, because it's such a strong faction, it wasn't that bad. Um, and like you say, there was an epic book, there was a void shard at 3k points. It's like, it's not a crazy amount of points to farm. And everyone that was like, oh, they should have given us a legendary book, they should have given us sacred shards. And I was like, eh. You got it, it's still Plarium. Yeah. I'm getting flame and chat now for saying people don't have Siri. Like, a lot of people do have Siri. She's been on 10x like three times now. <laughs> She's not that rare. Do you guys like this kind of tournament? Do you guys want to see more of this? Um, do you guys also think that this the reward should be the same as a standard uh, dragon tournament, which it seems to be, or should it be? No, I, um, I think standard you have dragon to do tournament more adds an be. epic book, and that's it. Okay. Like we don't get the void chart for the yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like a regular regular tournament normally caps an epic book, doesn't it? Like to be honest, I I find it okay. But I think if you're gonna like. This is costing me a lot of time where I'm not farming dragon, like at my optimal speed, right? And it's the same for everybody else. If you're having to farm with a, a slow team, um, you know, you could be doing speed run, like not doing speed runs, but doing your optimal run. So it's kind of, it's not great in that regard. And if you have to put in more work for gearing people and messing about with a team, all that kind of stuff, like I feel like you should be rewarded more. And this is like more targeted at end game people. Because obviously, if you're earlier, you're gonna really struggle. Like if you're mid game to build a whole yeah. team, you're gonna struggle. So in like with all of those things sort of lined up, I'd kind of expect the rewards to be better to make it worth your time. Like because so, if I don't get the rewards, I don't really care that much. I, so play Devil's Advocate on the rewards. It did coincide with the Dungeon Divers event, so you were effectively doubling up on the rewards. Uh, yeah, dungeon divers like is generally points. easy anyway. I, I would have got yeah, that yeah, whether like, I was doing I mean. this or not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you would have got it anyway, but like, let's assume, for example, you did go in and go on the Dark Elves only. Like, yeah, you were getting the Dungeon Divers rewards, but you're also getting... So you've actually got two Void Shards for running a Dragon Tournament if you did it properly, and then one if you did So, like, I think it's it's not amazing, but I don't think it was, like, awful rewards. People over-exaggerated, like, how, quote-unquote, bad the rewards were. They were okay. Yeah, but like being okay doesn't really encourage people to do it. I just did right, it to, exactly. to test it out and because I was streaming. Like you want to make it worth people's time. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's just my thoughts. Uh, Wanna mess? What do you think? Uh, we talked about it on the podcast yesterday. I, I thought it was fine. Um, there was the additional void chart on top. Um, I, we, talk, we talked a bit more in depth about how people were upset because they were under the impression that it could be any faction, which, to my knowledge, there was not. There was no official word from an actual Plarium employee saying, "Yeah, I yes, think it's any faction." Carried away with that. Yep, they certainly did. And so if they they took it, I, and again, I did not watch anybody's actual video, right? So I don't know if people said in their videos, "Yes." It will be any faction. I don't know if they specifically said that or if they just sort of insinuated that, but. From what I saw, from what be, what I read, people should not have just expected, hey, it's any faction. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, people jumped the gun. Um, but just as, uh, I think they're just testing the water, right? Because from what I heard, um, the rare, the all rare dragon, uh, Stu did say any faction. Okay, so yeah, that's that makes a bit sense as to why Stu dropped some videos about Plarium saying he was upset about things. Um, I think that's a bit on Stu for jumping the gun without official confirmation, but that's my own opinion. Um, yeah. 
I think that they're they're testing the water, right? Because again, what I I think what I heard, what people have told me is that the participation in the all rare tournament was pretty low. Um, So I I think they were like, hey, all rares didn't really work the way we wanted it to. Let's try a faction. And I think they're going to see that the all faction, all one forced faction will probably be pretty low participation as well. Um, I think. Yeah, they. Sorry. Yeah, you can go. No, I was just I was going to I think if they just made it any faction or if they're going to force a faction, I think uh, this is this is exclusively Stu's idea, but this is, that's who I heard it from first where you get x like a percentage of the points for how many from the faction that you use, right? So like if you if you want to run like so I my speed team for dragon, I could swap in and out Azavia for, so that's one dark elf champion. So if I run a singular dark elf champion, I would get a fifth of the points, right? Because she's twenty percent of a team. Or if I run yeah. two of them, forty percent, three of them, sixty, up to a hundred percent. So if someone wants to just finish the tournament as quickly as possible, hey, run five dark elves. Your runs are going to be a bit slower than normal, but you'll get it done. If you have one or two of them and they just happen to fit into your team, and it, you know, then hey, you run that team instead. It forces you to do a lot more dragon to complete the tournament, but then at least it's your own choice to do so. I think that would have been a better way to do it. Um, but I think that I think they're back to how I feel about it. They're testing the waters. I'm fine with it. I think the rewards were decent. Um, I just I think that they should have either I think they should they they should have done it slightly differently or or actually made it any faction so that people can feel more comfortable doing it with their teams. Yeah, that's decent. Yeah, yeah, like I. When I was going to jump in before, I was going to say that that same point that you should be rewarded for each one that you use. So if you use a team of all five, you get the maximum reward. But if you only can only use one or two because you just don't have any good champs in that faction or, or you can't clear, uh, you know, stage 20 using multiple of those champs just because of the skill yeah. set or whatever, then you still get a little bit of a, of a reward, um, but you just get less. So, like, I think that's... What's the ones other, other than Dragon? I feel like it's we've had this is a is a second or third one of these we've had, but they've all been dragons over. I think they. I, I think it was just this in the rares, rares, right? Just yeah, this in the rares. rares. Yeah. So yeah, both drag. I think the I other dragons. I think they're doing it because because they know dragons way too easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dragons like by far the easiest dungeon, so they know that like. Can you imagine how, like the shit show if they were said like okay you can do skinwalkers only, fire knight. fire knight. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I think that would be a real challenge. I don't even know if you can do it. Maybe with ally attack. Would be or fine. I think I think spider would be ridiculous. Maybe that'll be our next GNL internal tournament. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like orcs only spider. Oh, okay. of course it's orcs. <laughs> that is actually a very interesting challenge. <laughs> well, I'm not sure it's po- I, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> but we'll try. Don't, don't say it's not possible. I didn't think a, a million damage on a um, what is it, arcane king was possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one hit. That was pretty good. Um, but anyway, I think we're we're sort of coming towards the end here. Did you guys want to have any closing remarks on on anything in particular? I'll go through the list. Uh, so Deegs first. Uh, no, I think we've covered just about everything pretty well. All right. Do you have a, any shout outs you want to make, Deegs? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> toxic. Toxic, mate. Toxic. All right, Kalari? I know. Uh, can I... Uh, the case no, you, lo- you the lost case. it, mate. You lost it. <laughs> no, no, but- no, it's oh. gone. <laughs> Kalari? Uh, I want to shout out an up-and-coming streamer. He's uh, he's a little bit shy. He doesn't face cam often. But he's uh, he got some okay content. You know, he's trying to do some uh, world records. He, he attempts to compete in the arena, so almost a laughable level. But uh, he's doing his best, so I want to shout out uh, GNL Degas. De- I think it's Degas. Degas is how it's pronounced. Degas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, as uh, any closing remarks or shout outs you want to make? I uh, just want to say thank you for hosting this and getting us all together yep. to talk about this nonsense. And yeah. That's about it. It was fun to chill with you all of you guys. Yeah, no problem. No, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Uh, Manny? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I like to end things off in a good way, but I have something I want to vent on. 
Um, these okay. fucking speed packs, man. Oh, yeah, we forgot the, the okay, fucking yep. speed packs, bro. Fuck Polarium and their speed packs, bro. Like, straight up, like, I am I can afford all of them, and it's, it's a matter of principle. I'm not buying any of them. Back to back, two weeks in a row that they sell these legendary six star speed roll. Uh, you know, I don't know, man. It just it, it, it infuriated was, me. Was, it infuriated four. me so there was bad. Four. You doubled up was, on them, yeah. I think it was yeah, four in eight days. Twelve hundred dollars yeah. in speed packs that they, you know, and it's just wh why I hate it so much is because there's already like a whale issue that oh you're gonna finish in platinum because you're a whale. Would them keep doing this every week? It's like it's more of like. Pay to win, pay to win, pay to win, pay to win. And it's like less skill driven more and more. And it's creating such a big gap. And I'm just so against it. And I almost wanted to make a video like but, saying how horrible this is. But I just refuse to make rant videos. But yeah, just that's that's all I kind of wanted to say. I'm going to like vent completely to Diamond. Like I'm going to send him an essay tomorrow about it. Not that it's going to do anything, but you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's I know, my, Go ahead. I'm sure that I know I, some people got some. I couldn't justify. I think when the first pack came out, I got two or three, and then when the second pack came out, I got one or two. But I, I can't justify them all. Like I know some people have, but like, yeah, it's it's too much. Yeah, I, I bought like bought the, the first pack three, three, and then by the last one, I was like, I just I just can't buy anymore. It's it's too much. Yeah, and it's, it's you know what it is, is that the first time that it happened, in my mind, I started laughing, right? Because I'm like, these idiots, like, they're selling it at $60 each. Like, who who's going to buy this? Whatever. And then somehow, some way, the very next week, they sold them again. And that's when I lost my mind. Like, that's when I was like, what is happening here? They must have gone good the first time for them to sell it again right away. But I don't know. I was just like, I just, that's the, the one thing that really upset me the most uh, lately with them. Uh, I hope they, they stop doing it. You know, it was okay doing the epic ones once a month or whatever it was. But this weekly legendary six star, it's, it's just, I, it's not good for the game, I think. And that's really all I wanted to kind of say about that. I'm sorry to like leave things off salty, but I didn't want to get that off my chest because it's, it's really been bothering me. Yeah, no, I think good, we all have similar feelings. Yeah. So I, I I really liked that they did the um, the epic ones because it meant that yeah you can buy your way but only up to a certain point and then after right. that you have to use you know spend the time in the dragon like everybody else to try to get that epic own I mean, that legendary gear if you ever wanted a quad roll you couldn't buy a quad roll you'd have to go for it um, like everybody else and like it's such a low chance but you knew that everyone that had a quad roll they farm dragon for that. But now, um, you know, there's going to be some number of people that, that just bought their quad. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really it. That's the that's the main thing. And uh, I hope they stop that. If they do it once a month, okay. But if it's weekly or whatever, it's it's way too much. Uh, besides that, uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm really thankful that you hosted it for a for first host. You did exceptional paints here. Uh, I think this went great. I like that it's, it's very... Uh, free to be able to talk about anything that we want we're not sitting here worrying about like it has to be done in an hour we have to cover this specific topic we're just kind of free flowing freestyling the entire time and that's what that's what a podcast should be like and uh i can't wait to, you know for all the people that missed it to upload it so that way you guys can all see it my shout out as usual i want to get this man to a thousand subs more badly than anything in the world please go ahead and subscribe to my boy boomer um Awesome, awesome content. 6ix9ine Boomer on YouTube. Yeah, man. I want this guy to have a thousand subs. I want him in the content creator chat. I want I want to see his personality unra uh, unraveled in there. Boomer is here. <laughs> yeah, I, I really up, want baby? that guy in there. <laughs> <laughs> so hope you guys sub to him. He has awesome content. Super, super, super smart guy. Top 10 player easily all day long. Um, but yeah. Best karaoke streamer in Raid, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, the karaoke. 100%. <laughs> um, so, what a mess. Um, anyone you wanted to shout out? Yeah, I just want to say thanks for... Well, I guess we're all on this every week, but uh, thanks for hosting this time, Pain Seer. I think it went really, really well. Yep. Uh, you, you directing us. Just wanted to drop a shout out to gallifrey andy h 10s um bro your your blender defense you have senatia before your skull crown so you should go fix that buddy that's it <laughs> <laughs> wow 
<laughs> Holy shit, toxic. Oh, wow. Toxic clan, by the way. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Maybe he was just trying to make it easy for you because he, he felt sorry. <laughs> Jesus. No, Christ, no, I'm pretty Shut sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, <laughs> that is hilarious. Good one, good one, Wanna Mess. Oh, wow. Who, who's next? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that, Deeks, I'll give you a chance. You, you, you no. hold your tongue. No, 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 fuck no, off, no, no, no you're done, yeah, you're no. done. <laughs> 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 all right, guys. Um, so, from my perspective, thanks for all joining in. Um, it's been awesome to have you all on. And, um, yeah, I thought we covered all the topics um, pretty well. I um, wanted to thank everyone in chat for tuning in.